Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the Town of Camden Select Board meeting for March 21st, 2023, the first full day of spring. Um, just a few footnotes before we start a call to order. First and foremost, the uh, town, we are broadcasting on YouTube uh, this evening, as we always do, uh, for those who want to participate that way. Also, we are streaming a webinar, and the webinar's uh, link can be found on our agenda, which is in our, go to the Town of Camden website, select board meetings for March 21st, and on the um, agenda, there is a link for that. Uh, people who are on Zoom, we respectfully ask to understand that um, you, we handle communication in Zoom just as we do the live audience. Please raise your hand as preferred uh, uh, so that we can address, uh, try to get you on to make comment or whatever you desire. Please do not use the tech, chat function. We do not monitor that. So with that, I will call to order the, the, uh, <clears throat> the agenda. And the first item we have is uh, public comment on non-agenda items. Is there anybody here who would like to speak to a non-agenda item? Okay, thank you very much. Item two, our select board minutes. Because of uh, late production of the select board minutes, I would like to ask the board uh, to make a motion to, uh, to table this item to date certain April 4th. I make a motion that we table the approval of the minutes from, I think it's two or three board meetings now until April, uh, April 4th? I, I think it might just be the last meeting. But yes, Because no. the 4th. last board meeting, we were waiting for two. Oh, no, we did. No, we two did two. We right. did so two. just one. Just okay. one. Anyway, I, I table them. I make a motion that we table. Second. Motion made and second. Discussion? All in favor? 5-0. Thank you very much. This, we have two items on our consent agenda this evening, uh, one with two subsets, and I'll read them. It's the approval of the Village Green applications for two items. One, the Guntokuk Rowing Fundraiser, which is done annually on May 7, 2023. And the second is the Camden Rotary Music by the Sea Concert, July 4, 2023. The second item is the approval of assembly permit for classic cups on July 27 to 29, 2023, and approval of temporary signs for downtown lampposts as we have done in the past. Are there any objections to the items on the consent agenda? I have no objection, but I would like the classic cup to be spelled correctly. <laughs> Yes, I, I think it's the it's the classics. Uh, okay, okay. Just you know. <laughs> Point taken, but uh, uh, notwithstanding that, my question again is: there any objection to the items on the, on the uh, consent agenda? I do just want to make a point that um, <clears throat> should there be any perceived conflict of interest, I am a member and of the Camden Rotary Club, and if anybody has any objections to me voting on this item, speak now. Or forever hold your peace. <laughs> and but, but I, I'm sure as a member of the Camden Rotary, you would also like that the Music by the Sea concert has a C and not a missing C in the middle. Connor? We're starting off on a great track. Anyhow, Stephanie, I don't agree that, I don't agree that you do. Uh, unless anybody disagrees with me, we're going to go forward with, uh, the, uh, and again, any, um, any objections to the items. Uh, not hearing any of they are hereby adopted. adopted. With that, we have, uh, we move on to public hearings. We have uh, four this evening. The first of which, now, I will take each one individually because um, they're, it's appropriate given the, the breadth of work. Um, remember, uh, remind everybody, the purpose of a public hearing is for the select board to solicit information from the public on the matters at hand. Uh, during this, the uh, public session of a public hearing, I will, excuse me, I'm sorry. I will ask anybody in the public who would like to come up and speak to speak to the matter for or against or just speak to it. Please be courteous. Please be brief and to the point if you can, because we don't want to accommodate anybody who wants to speak. Of course, uh, uh, if you uh, have, if you, when, when we've gone through every person that wants to speak to that item, I will close the public hearing portion for that item and revert to discussion by the select board for any action to be taken. During that time period with the select board, there's no public, further public input unless a select board member has a question of, to somebody who has previously spoken. So with that, I will um, move uh, to 
the application of Wolf Peach at 50 Elm Street for a renewal class one restaurant liquor license. Is there anybody from the public who would like to address that license issue? Not seeing any hands, I'll close the public hearing portion of this and revert to select board uh, um, uh, discussion. Motion. I'll make a motion that we approve as written. Second. Oh, uh, any discussion? Sorry, any discussion? All those in favor? Five zero. Thank you. On the second item, I'm going to combine. Uh, we have two items in the action items for liquor, uh, Vich, Vittler licenses for the next two entities. Uh, the application of Redbird doing business as Mosaic at 31 Elm Street for a new Class One restaurant liquor license, and I'm adding item five. Uh, a uh, the Vittler license for the same entity. Is there anybody here uh, from the public who would like to speak for to uh, this matter? Not seeing any. I will close the public hearing portion and revert to select board decision. Make a motion that we approve. I'll second. Motion made and seconded. Uh, discussion. All those in favor? Five zero. Thank you. Similarly, with item four C which is the application of LaCav, I'm told it was pronounced, uh, LLC, I said LaCave and I got hit, uh, <laughs> application of LaCav LLC at seven public landing for a new class one restaurant liquor license and the other item under action, which is the Vittler license for the same entity. Is there anybody from the public here would like to speak to the Mosaic applications? Not seeing anybody, I will close the public hearing and revert to a select board decision. I make a motion that we approve. Second. As written. Motion made and approved. Thank you. All those in favor, you can get of me a little bit. The fourth item on the public hearing is the basically to amend the Camden Code, Article 3, Paragraph 293.2, terminology, to amend the definition of marijuana by adding the term marijuana retail stores, to add a new definition and for marijuana retail store and to amend definition of marijuana establishment to, to Article 8, Paragraph 298.8, .8, Downtown Business District B1, Paragraph 298.10, Transitional Business District B3, and Paragraph 298.15, Transitional Harbor Business District B-TH, to add a new commercial use for marijuana retail stores. This new use defines standards for establishing these stores and for complying with state and local licensing requirements. Before I start the uh, public um, uh, discussion, uh, as I have with previous ones, I wanted to make a, a footnote. We have received a lot of uh, emails from individuals uh, over the past days up, and they've been as, as, uh, as a short time ago as like uh, three hours ago, we received more. Um, many of them that we could get into the packet are in the packet uh, for for your uh, to be read. However, the town cannot uh, possibly uh, be monitoring emails up to hours before a meeting to get information into a packet, so they're not all there. So, in fairness, um, going to do something a little bit uh, that we've done in the past, and that is all emails that have been sent and received by the town us will be uh, printed out and available for the public review at any time at the town offices, I uh, hope after tomorrow, Audra, if that's possible, uh, we'll do that because, you know, we could, I don't wanna, I don't wanna take the, the high ground and say, you know, you don't submit it on time, it doesn't get recorded, that's not fair. Uh, this is a, an, obviously an issue many people are interested in, pro and con, and we wanna make sure everybody's information is available for public record. So with that, I will open up the public hearing portion and ask if anybody would like to speak to this proposed uh, uh, amendment to the Camden Code. Should we have maybe Jeremy start with, I was thinking the same thing. Um, Jer Jeremy um, we, we could, over. well, we, maybe, maybe Jeremy, what you could do, it would be helpful, is, come on up. Uh, is uh, first and foremost, I think one of the things that was mentioned to me and I actually forgot was um, where this process of approving 
this, uh, well, or proposing and or getting the, taking this um, uh, ref, um, to a warrant or not, where we have been, why we started this, wh why it came to pass, and where we are today up to this moment in time to the board kind of contemplating this ordinance change. Like a process check. Yeah, process check. Sure. Um, so zoning ordinance amendments can happen um, like three ways, really. The select board can request an ordinance amendment. Um, the planning board can request an ordinance amendment or um, a petitioner can. In this case, it was a petitioner, a Camden resident, Mark Benjamin, um, proposed, um, proposed these changes and we took them through the planning board process and there's been a historical practice forever for all petitions that came through this going through the petitioner process go to the planning board for a public hearing as well. Planning board held a workshop, I think on February 16th, and then they held a, um, a public hearing, I think it was on March 1st on it, um, went through the details of what was proposed um, and took comments um, both pro and against. Um, but no matter what happens at the planning board level, um, that petitioner by ordinance is allowed a public hearing before the select board and that's why it's before you as well so that's where we are today um, and I think you outlined the proposed changes pretty well Bob um, it's amending some definitions because I think people probably maybe they don't remember but we did a number of years ago the town voted to allow cultivation facilities in town uh, went through that process and we also created a marijuana licensing um, ordinance as well that's in our business licensing um, ordinances that we have um, that doesn't need to change because the way that was created and approved by voters um, would allow a retail shops should they eventually become a, a legal use in town. Um, so that's where we are with that. Um, I know the applicant or the petitioner is here. Um, and then um, I, I think you could probably speak to some of it. I can answer any questions if you have. I know there's been some questions about 1,000 feet and 500 feet. Um, state law on this issue, it says a thousand feet from certain facilities and we have detailed what those facilities are in the ordinance. Um, I ran the ordinance by the state's office of uh, marijuana policy, OMP it's called. Um, they reviewed it. Our, our ordinance is fine as drafted um, or what the proposed drafts are, um, are meets their standard. Um, I do know that there's an email that went around earlier to you all about educational facilities. Um, our ordinance addresses the, that issue. Um, our definitions, and the reason, I'll just go into it a little bit, our definition of public school actually includes private schools as well. Um, so that's why we use public schools and didn't also use private schools because we don't have a definition for that in our zoning ordinance. Um, so the 1,000 feet is, is the standard. Um, the state allows you to go down to 500 feet. Um, from those those facilities and that's what the applicant or the petitioner requested was a 500 feet not a thousand uh, Jeremy I do have some process questions sure. um, So I'll, I'll give you all three and you can answer them however, you know in whichever order you choose uh, why two facilities? Why the specific b1 bth and b3 zones and then the one you've already addressed, but maybe in more detail a thousand versus 500 the state just explain what the state allows and why we chose to go to 500 and you know potentially okay um so again this was a petitioner driven um amendment request right so the 500 feet i'll just start there that was that was the request of the petitioner um for 500 feet and under state law state law says a thousand feet but state law also says that a municipality is allowed to go down to 500 feet um, and that's what this petitioner requested. So that's why it's 500 and not 1,000. Um, the two facilities, um, that was, I had a conversation with the petitioner um, and it was really, um, I guess, you know, he, the petitioner runs a facility in Rockland currently, is opening one in Belfast. Um, and I just pointed out to the, to him, I said, so what happens if, I mean, we know that you're trying to come in, you're a Camden resident, you're trying to open up a shop here in Camden, what happens if the day that, should it pass, should it get through the select board and go through the process, what happens um, on that first day that it's effective if you're not the person that submits first um, and then you're out? Um, so he decided to make two allowed and that would be adult use retail 
um, and medical caregivers as well. So I just want to keep everyone understanding that this mm -hmm. applies not just to adult adult retail, but it applies to medical caregivers too. So we would the ordinance would allow two total townwide. Mm -hmm. um, and so it could be each one of those. So the petitioner wrote the proposed ordinance change? Correct. It, it wasn't town staff that wrote it? Correct. Okay, so the petitioner wrote it? Correct. Okay. Yeah, I will say the B3, you asked about the B3 and mm -hmm. why the B3. That was a planning board request, actually. Um, so when the petitioner brought through, it was just B1 and BTH. And the planning board during their workshop said, um, you know, they said, what about the B3? Um, and the petitioner was okay adding the B3 to it, and the planning board was in favor at the time of adding B3 to it. And that's what they had their hearing on, was B, B1, BTH, and the B3. Well, uh, for what you say, can you, can you explain? Excuse me, we, we're going through a process, and if you have questions in the process, let's focus, but I want to get back to the public, to maybe they want to make comment. Sure. I just I, just a clarification sure. that okay. not all of us know what B one, okay, B I understand. H and B three are from um, memory. I know you. I there's sent, a map. I yeah. sent a map yeah. earlier today. Do, just um, for the sake of discussion. I don't discussion. know if you could, someone could share that possibly or not. I'm not connected um, to this right so now. the B one is the downtown. I think what everyone would consider the downtown um, business okay. district. So it's all of Main Street. Go down Bayview. Um, We'll pop, the, we'll pop the map okay. up, all right? That's a um, good idea. We're, people, we're in the B1 here. Know what BTH is Mechanic and, and Knowlton is all in the B1. You go up Mechanic a little bit, that's all the B1. Where, um, Thanks, Sandra. Yes. So the B1 would be uh, the, I, I guess, aqua blue. Um, the pink would be the BTH, which is the transitional harbor business. And the blue is the B3. It goes up Elm Street. Um, and just so people know, if you go back, sorry, yeah, so just those point to, like blue goes all the way up Elm Street. Correct. And the dots um, are lots that would not facilitate um, or allow a um, a adult use retail store medical caregiver shop because those would all be within five hundred feet of either the Camden Public Library, the watershed school, the Montessori School oh. um, and Atlantic Academy, which is on um, Knowlton Street. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you're looking in the downtown core, if you will, uh, it's the stretch of Bayview that would allow them, primarily that's it, um, this little corner building here um, and this motel here, the new hotel that's opening up here and the parking lot, the town's parking lot, would be lots that are beyond the 500 feet from any school. Mm -hmm. um, and then you go up Elm Street, um, you know, all that blue is because it's within 500 feet of the Montessori school, and then once you get beyond the blue dots, um, there's no schools or other facilities that would be required to be meet, meet the 500-foot setback from, um, are no longer there. Does that help? What were the red again? The red, the red dots are just this would be 500 feet with um, from the um, Atlantic Academy, which is on Knowlton Street, uh -huh. okay. um, just okay. up from the skate park. Okay. Okay. Um, the orange would be those that are within Watershed School, and obviously the other couple of red on Knowlton would be within 500 feet of Watershed too. We just didn't want to clutter up the right, colors. Right. 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 Yeah. Why just those districts? Why not? I mean, we have other commercial districts, correct? We do. Uh, again, this was a petitioner-driven thing, uh, and he was proposing just the B1 and the BTH. It was the planning board that asked to um, to change it to go up to the B3. Mm -hmm. So is that like Hannaford and that? Hannaford's area? actually not no. in the B3. Um, Slide it up, Audrey. You can see it ends around it John ends, Street. It ends right about John Street. Yeah. yeah. What's the purple? Uh, oh. I believe that's the I, what does it say? B2. B2, okay, I'm sorry. Can't, it's hard for me to keep them all together. Light blue, as I recall, was the same zone we had dealt with. The, the light deep. purple? Or the light blue? Uh, light blue light was the, B3. Is B3. Right, B3 is where we allowed, we weren't allowing any um, coffee shops and Dunkin' Donuts and all that stuff. We weren't allowed to, beyond that point they are. <laughs> And the purple is from the Camden Public Library. Yeah, five hundred. Five hundred. Okay. 
All right. Um, speak up soon, please? I'm sorry. Uh, could, could you speak louder? Absolutely. He yells at me. He, 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 yeah, he absolutely can. The mic is on. If you turn on those speakers a little more to amplify, I don't. It doesn't sound like the amplification Hello? is nope, on. No, it doesn't. I'm sorry. I thought it was. It, it doesn't. I'm not sure. Okay. It doesn't sound like it's on. I'll speak louder. Good question. And. And this is a decision. Oh, sounds there like, it is. Um, and this is a a decision about whether to send this to voters. Correct. Not you know, we're not deciding this tonight. Just Correct. for anybody that might be confused about that. Correct. And what I put in the memo was, if you decide to move this forward, I would draft warrant language that you would vote on eventually to send to voters. Um, but if you decide not to send it to voters, Maybe it's dead today. Right. Yeah. Okay, right. so we don't, wouldn't have, if we were to decide to send it to voters tonight, we would still have another opportunity to decide on the exact language of how uh, that would happen. I mean, I, I know that we, we would be within the bounds of the proposed ordinance. Changes. Right. But, yes. you know, sometimes there's a wiggle room in terms of what is included in the explanation. Yep. I True. Believe it's, I believe the key term is as long as it's not substantive. I think the substantive part has to do with um, making language. changes after. To the, right, like if I were to say, well, uh, I really think we should make it, you know, a thousand feet, we could argue whether that's substantive or not. But the, we go through that process each time of deciding what goes out to voters, like that yes. descriptive right. language, and yes. so much of the time. To make it clear. That's the hard part that people have. Yeah. You get there and you don't know what you're, do I vote yes or no if I don't no, want I, I, it? Yeah, um, a great point, Alice, because that's to the heart of us. That's what our job is, is to pass certain things on to the public, to our legislative body is the public, and to make sure it's clear, correct, and so that the, hopefully the voters can make a logical decision on the matter without any substantial confusion. I agree, and we do that all the time. Yeah. And we'll definitely work hard to make sure that the language works, and you'll have plenty of time to go over that language. Okay. So just one other point that I'm that you brought up. So the planning board suggested changes, an addition of a location B mm -hmm. H three B three. So if we wanted to make changes to remove that or remove B1, is that on the table? Um, I'm not saying that I want to, I'm just yeah. wondering sure. if at this I point. I think it's on the table, um, sure. I think there's some, sometimes some concern on substantive changes and whether or not you can make substantive changes to what is proposed. Um, but I would think um, overall that would not be mm. very substantive, to be honest. Especially if we were to be removing something rather than adding it, maybe? Right. Is that occasionally the? Mm, sometimes. There. It depends on what it is, but you're right. Typically, that's correct. But I, I, wouldn't, consider this, I wouldn't consider the 1,000 or the 500 or the zoning as substantive. Uh, I, think, I do think Bill Kelly's um, in attendance on Zoom if you wanted to ask that specific to, question. If he wants to comment on that, he's welcome to pop up. Um, um, but. Um, while he's doing that, um, perhaps we could go back to, if other uh, questions, let me go back. I would like to go back to uh, encouraging anybody from the public who came tonight that would like to speak here tonight to the issue. And I saw Mark's hand go up. And please, uh, anybody comes to the podium, please introduce yourself in your residency is very important, by the way. And the unlikely event somebody here is not from Camden, that's actually permissible as long as the board approves it. Uh, but we give priorities to those of us who live here, of course. Thank Mark. you, Bob. Thank you, Bob. Can you hear me okay, everybody? Thank you. Um, just, Tom, you had a couple questions that I think I might be able to answer that were about the petitioner, which is me. Um, one, with respect to the 500. I'm, I'm sorry, name and, and. Oh, I'm sorry, Mark Benjamin, 10 Union Street, Camden. Thank you. Um, you asked about the 500 foot setback and why that was in there. I put that in there, obviously. Um, in all of the towns that we work in, which is Rockland and now Belfast, and all of the other towns that I am aware of, there are 65 towns that have done this. I have never seen a 1,000 foot foot setback. 
I've only seen 500 foot setbacks. I thought that was the way the state law was. So it, I, I thought, the other thing is that if you change it to a thousand, so we did have Gartley and Dorsky come down and run some numbers here. If we do this 500 foot setback, you're basically looking at downtown is out. I mean, this area is all out. We can't do it here because of the, the only place on Main Street that I can see that might work is where uh, there's a clothing store there right here on the corner. Um, oh, oh, on the corner of Mechanic? Yeah, right, no, right, I'll think of it in a second. Leonard's, Leonard's would work, that's it. Uh, Leonard's is taken. There's a couple places on Bayview, if you, if you draw the circles. So we're basically just talking about Bayview Street and I think that's why the planning board added that additional, my understanding of Chriso's addition was, there's, not a real, there's no real estate here really. We're talking about a few storefronts, so we added those. Um, so that's, that's how that came about. Um, Botany is a high, here, here's my presentation. Botany is a high-end uh, retail marijuana company a luxury marijuana company with a grow operation in Hope. That's where we grow our product. Our first re retail location is in Rockland. And our second store is currently under construction in Belfast. We are seeking a town vote to allow two adult use marijuana shops in Camden. Tom, you also asked why two. It's a smaller town than Rockland. I thought it wasn't just that I want to get one of the slots. It just seemed like a, a more reasonable number, honestly. Um, it wasn't signed, I didn't, there was no science behind it. <clears throat> we are seeking a town vote to allow two adult use uh, marijuana retail shops in Camden. Please come by the Rockland store, see some of your friends and neighbors shopping there, or your friends and neighbors who own the place. The average age of our customers is 49 years old. Before I start, I, I do want to uh, uh, add a note of caution um, as this debate has moved forward. And I would like to ask the select board and the citizens of Camden to be extremely skeptical of some of the assertions that have put forward against our proposal. And I will give a couple examples. These arguments seem designed to provoke emotion and to provoke fear. They are mostly about fear. Be afraid of what would happen to Camden. But if you look at them, they are largely unsupported by facts or are just false. I don't want to take the time here to go through all of the things that the opposition said. I'll just give you an example right here. Here's a quote from um, Matthew Levin, director of hotels at Bayview Collections, so that's Stu's business, right, on his letterhead. Recreational marijuana is an all-cash industry. Since marijuana is illegal on the federal level, federally insured banks won't handle marijuana money. Businesses and customers restricted to cash are e easy targets for robbery, burglary, and other violent crime. That's from Matthew Levin. That's scary. It's scary. It's, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true that, we're cash, that, we're, that we use cash. Come to the store and run your card. <laughs> we're cashless. Most weeds that I know of, many weed stores are there. There are some that, that probably use, still use cash, but I think this is an argument against Scott's place, not against me. So I just want to be cautious about that. There's things in here that are just patently false. And I just want to warn people about that. <clears throat> Indeed, the real facts behind this issue show a lot of reason not to be afraid, okay? Marijuana was legalized in 2016. There are now 62 towns that have invited adult use marijuana stores like what we're considering here. They go from Kittery to Presque Isle. They include Damascata, uh, Hollowell, Rockland. And that this, is order, this is according to the main Office of Cannabis Policy. I also encourage you to check the sources on some of these opposition arguments. During that period, since these 62 store towns have done this, Crime rates in Maine have decreased. They have gone down. I'm not saying marijuana made crime go down. I'm just saying it hasn't gone up because of us. That's included the Maine Department of Public Safety and that those crime rates include violent crime. So crime rate is, crimes are going down, okay? We also have very similar evidence here in Midcoast, in our, in our neighborhood, okay? We run a store in Rockland. There are six marijuana stores like ours in Rockland. So I think if this is going to bring a wave of crime that my opponents keep saying, we probably would know that in Rockland. And one way to figure that out is to ask Rockland. So I did. I called the deputy chief of police, Alex Gaylor, who said he's happy to talk with any of you about this at any time. Here's his quote. 
The marijuana stores in Rockland have not led to an increase in violent crime in Rockland or any other crime, kind of crime for that matter. I cannot even think of any issues that we have had because of these stores. <clears throat> That's the town right up the road. So I'm just warning you, when you hear, be afraid, be afraid, I've been told that I'm gonna kill dogs with leaving weed on the streets. I've been told there's heroin, gonna be heroin dealers outside my shop. <clears throat> It's really crazy talk, and I, I think that's a quote from the, and, and Alex Gaylor, as I said, happy to talk with you about it. <clears throat> now for the reasons to move forward with this vote. Downtown Camden needs a little bit more good retail. It's looking a little dull out there. So I walk downtown Camden all, all the time. I live down here. I walked this week and I saw 11 empty storefronts. This is not an official count. This is just the stores that I think are are empty and boarded up or whatever. There are 11 empty storefronts I counted in downtown, 11. There are another four empty storefronts in transitional district. And downtown I counted a separate 16 that are closed all winter. It's not hopping, guys. And the, meanwhile, we are ready to negotiate at least tonight, <laughs> okay? We're ready to move in. And we have customers that come all year round. There's foot traffic all year round and on Sundays. So we're like a living, breathing store. <clears throat> and in addition to that, we are precisely the kind of company that I keep hearing people that are interested in entrepreneurship say that they need in this town, that we are that company. We are locally owned. All of the owners live here or in the surrounding areas. <clears throat> we make an extremely high quality product. It's a boutique product. We are in a rapidly growing cutting edge industry. We are a job mag magnet with relatively high paying jobs. You hear about the job shortage? We don't have a job shortage. People are knocking on our doors because they want to work in this industry. <clears throat> and studies support that. Here's a, here's a quote from a study. Our empirical analysis indicates that states that legalize recreational marijuana experience statistically significant increases in their overall employment growth rate. That's the Ohio State University of Moritz College of Law and Drug Enforcement Policy. I linked to it in my testimony. <clears throat> in addition, Rockland, where I just told you the chief of police said, there's no crime problem here because of this. Rockland, which has six stores, in January 26 of 2023 was named the hottest real estate town in Maine. Real estate's going up faster in, in Rockland than any other place. I'm not saying that that's because of the weed stores. I'm saying that it, that it is, is in spite of them. <clears throat> and lastly, I think this, we have to do a little bit about diversification in our, in our state. Um, the, the lobster landings last year were 389 million. I love the lobster industry. It is facing some troubled times. We're over 400 million in sales in our industry. We're bigger than lobster. Um, and finally, the last thing I will say is, I, I just want to reiterate the question before the board here. Camden has voted twice in favor of our industry. Once to legalize it, one to make grow operations. Certainly, the, the, if all we're asking for from the select board is to allow the citizens to vote. That's all we want. Thank you, Mark. With that, I'd like to ask again the public if anybody else would like to speak to this matter, as, uh, as Mark just did. Are any hands in the audience? Yes, young lady. Please. I almost didn't see your hand there. <laughs> um. Okay, my name's Pat Chen. I'm at 281 Washington Street, Camden. Speak a little louder, please. Oh, okay. Or closer to the mic might work, too. How does, okay, does this a little better? Okay. Yes. All right, great. <laughs> um, so back in 2016, I did vote yes to legalize marijuana. And at that time, I was thinking what was getting legalized was just the basic marijuana plant, the bags of weed that I knew back as a teenager or in my 20s. And um, I honestly think a lot of other people thought that's all that was getting legalized as well. I mean, I'm sure there was a certain sector of the population who um, maybe knew the market a little better and was more aware, a little more savvy of all the products that are actually out there. But I think most of us really thought we were just voting in those bags of weed from high school. Um, as I've come to research this topic more over time, I'm finding out that there are a lot of products 
in um, out on the market that fall into the category of what they call higher potency THC products. Sometimes these products can be when the plant has been bred over time to produce stronger cannabis and many other times it's taking the marijuana plant and processing it further with chemicals, etc., to produce these higher potency THC products. So my concern here is that I think it's very important for the public to be aware that these products are out there and to be aware of the damage that they can do, especially to our younger generation. Um, even though head shops do make you show an ID when you enter into the store, many people, um, teenagers and people in their early 20s are still consuming these products. And the concern here is that many studies have been done that show a rise in cannabis-related ED visits for acute psychiatric symptoms, cannabis use disorder, which has a whole list of its own symptoms, as well as suicides. These higher THC products also have a greater addiction level than the bags of grass we think back to in high school. Concerning the pot-related suicide, medical reviews have traced back to finding that the only substance in many cases in the person at the time of death were from these higher THC products. This piece of information I was getting from a PBS documentary where they had a Colorado physician who was stating some statistics from cannabis-induced suicides. And when you start to query the data more, there's a lot of information with various health institutions that points to the mental health implications and addictiveness of these products. Now, of course, not all people who try them are going to get addicted or are going to go through um, psychosis, et cetera. However, there are enough cases where physicians slash health institutions have been able to connect the dots and have been raising red flags on the topic. If I had known about these products and what this whole scene was about when the ballot question came out to legalize marijuana in Maine, I would never have voted for it. And my, I'm really pretty liberal in my politics. So further investigation that I found was a study by, done by The Lancet, and this is a well-known and respected medical journal on these higher potency THC products. Their summary contains some of the following points. Um, from this systemic review, or this systemic review highlights the potential for an increased risk of negative mental health outcomes and higher levels of addiction. The findings support recommendations to discourage use of high-potency cannabis products for low-risk use. The recommendations should be incorporated into education tools and in the management of cannabis in clinical settings. Policymakers should carefully consider cannabis potency when regulating cannabis in legal markets, such as through limits or taxes based on THC concentrations. Um, I've also seen JAMA, which is the Journal of the American Medical Association, come forth with uh, similar studies. And then when I started to look at states who have come up with limits on the products, I found that Vermont has limits that their state legislature has placed on high potency THC products sold there. And um, these limits have been well supported by the Vermont Medical Society, the American Academy of Pediatrics Vermont chapter, the Vermont Academy of Family Physicians, and the Vermont Psychiatric Association. There is, of course, opponents to this um, ruling that came out, and they are talking about, well, if you have, you have these existing products out there, so they're just gonna move into the black market if they can't sell them in legal stores. My opinion on this is you're always going to have another reason for not doing something. And I don't think that two wrongs here make a right. So while I'm not advocating that we never send this, town, uh, this topic out to the town for a vote, 
because I think it should go to the vote. What I'm advocating for is for Camden to learn from these states who have had longer periods of sales history and thus a longer time to experience all that can go wrong due to these higher THC products sold. Um, then let our state legislature come forth with THC limits on these products as there's a lot, of, a lot of medical information out there regarding the pitfalls of these high potency THC products. Then once we have this in place, send it out to the town for a vote, for this is a topic that isn't going to go away. We already have a strapped mental health system in Maine, so why add to the burden? And even more importantly, why offer more of a chance to let more people become afflicted in negative ways by these um, high potency THC products. Please summarize, please. Pardon? It, what time, I'm trying to maintain. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm all done. Yeah, you're sure. Yeah, yeah, yes, thank you. Very well presented, thank you very much. This young lady, no, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, there'll be no booing or applauding, thank you. <laughs> we'll, we'll wait till after, and we can do it at the end. Hi, my name is Bonnie Lau. I live at 65 Chestnut Street in Camden. Um, I have been a substance abuse counselor for 35 years. And it's my opinion that cannabis should be legal. Uh, I think I've never had any client um, not use any kind of drugs because they were illegal. If they want to use drugs or any kind of substances, they are going to use them. And, you know, I'm not arguing with that. What I'm saying is the medical effects of marijuana, tobacco, alcohol, you know, are devastating to some people. And I think everyone should be educated as to what the medical effects of <clears throat> using marijuana for lung cancer, it's as bad as smoking cigarettes. And people can come up with things, well, it's not bad, it's, it's, it is bad. And I'm telling you from my own experience, my son started smoking pot when he was in fifth grade. I, I don't think being a thousand feet away or 500 feet away makes any difference. You know, what difference does that make? But it was a devastating journey for him. So I have a personal feeling about it. Um, when he picked it up and his friends picked it up, they never thought they were going to get addicted to it, um, like many kids. But, you know, it does happen. And my point is, why promote? a substance in Camden that they can go someplace else to get, why promote liquor stores or tobacco stores or pot stores when it's a health hazard? So that's just my feeling, and thank you so much for listening. Well, thank you for okay. coming. We appreciate it. Uh, other hands, gentlemen on the aisle here, please. <laughs> How y'all doing tonight? Um, I don't live in Camden, but I have a business, Uncle Willie's Candy Shop, down on Bayview, which is apparently a target zone for this business. Um, on a professional level... Yes, excuse me. I just want to be clear with the board. Um, he's a non-resident. Um, you have any problem with him speaking? Um, uh, anybody want to voice... As long as he introduces himself. Yep, Matt Sutton. Sorry to interrupt you, sir. No, that's all right. Um, approaching it from a professional level as a small business owner, a candy shop owner, um, these marijuana shops sell the edibles, uh, most particularly, uh, I don't know your shop in particular, but they sell candy that is infused with marijuana and once it's out of the wrapper, it is almost identical to the candy that comes out of my shop. And I really, really don't want any kids out there that are mistaken candy for something that shouldn't be consumed by children. Um, that's on a professional level. Uh, personal level, 
Before I sold candy, I was a Border Patrol agent for 26 years, 21 years down on the southern border. And I had friends that were killed trying to fight this poison as it was coming into the country. So I have a interest in this, both personal and professional. So, Thanks for coming. Thank, thank you very you. much. We like your candy store. I eat it too much. Uh, this young lady, please. Good evening. I'm Sophie Picconi, and I live at 21 Pleasant Ridge here in Camden. I'll try to sp go f quickly because I have quite, Thank a, you very quite much. a paper here. Thank you. So I've been doing a lot of thinking about this. I bet. And I have a good name too, right? So um, the proposed amendments um, to our zoning code aren't ready for a town vote, and the town itself isn't ready for a town vote. The, pro pro the proposed amendments doesn't align with state law and will put Camden in violation with legal jeopardy. Per section two, uh, 204A, the State Maine Cannabis Legalization Act, the proposed zoning amendment isn't compliant. Specifically, the lang language in the amendment submitted by the petitioners failed to account for state law specific specifying that the setback must, be, must account for an educational facility that serves children. And I know during your presentation about setbacks and all that, this was talked about a little bit, but I wanna go a little deeper into it. The language of the proposed amendment to the town zoning, zoning code by the petitioners does not include this language, which dramatically limits where they can operate and open a dispensary in Camden. Language of current proposed amendment is the establishment must be set back 500 feet from the boundary line of a lot containing a childcare facility, a daycare center, a nursery school, a public uh, preschool program, a public school, or the Camden Public Library. And that is from map um, 120 lot uh, 268. Language of the main state law is a cannabis, cannabis establishment is proposed to be located within a thousand feet of the property line of a pre-existing public or private school, except that if a, if a municipality by ordinance or other regulation prohibits the location of can, cannabis establishments at a distance less than a thousand feet, but no less than 500 feet from the property line of a pre-existing public or private school, that lesser distance applies. For the purpose of this paragraph, school includes a public school as the defined title 20, um, 20A, section one, subsection 24. A private school as defined as title 20A, section one, subsection 22. A public preschool program as defined by title A, uh, 20A, section one, subsection 23, or any other educational facility that serves children from pre-kindergarten to grade 12. That sentence alone must be added, and that sentence is, or any other educational facility that serves children from pre-kindergarten to grade 12 in order to comply with the state law. And it's not in their proposed um, amendment to this. The implications of that language would exclude all of our central downtown commercial districts from, be, from being fair game for dispensaries. Examples of these facilities would, of these facilities would mean that all of Bayview and most of the Harbor District are unacceptable places to open dispensaries under the state law, or this, or the surround, or the gray gray area surrounding what it means to be an educational facility could put our town and those facilities at risk of violating state law by virtue of being less than 500 feet away from a dispensary. The Camden Yacht Club sailing program, which is the largest youth program we have here in the summer, um, is about 400 feet away from Uncle Willie's and therefore extends uh, the current no zone to an additional 100 feet north of Uncle Willie's. The Bay Chamber Concerts is less than 500 feet south of Camden Cone and all the points south of Camden Cone. Hurricane Island Base Camp is approximately 500 feet away from Symmetry and less than 500 feet from 16 Bayview Hotel and all points northwest of the hotel. Allen Turtle Bookshop hosts children's programming. It is a stretch to call it an educational facility that serves children 
but we know the spirit of law wouldn't be for them to host book readings for young children adjacent to a marijuana retail store. Page Gallery also hosts art programs for the youth. Why should Camden be the guinea pig? What is the rush to put this to a vote? More than 90% of towns in Maine had an opt-in in to have a dispensaries by September 2021. Only 47 of Maine's 500 towns. And this is all on Maine Public. You can look this information up and it's linked in this letter. According to Botany's petition, that number stands at 62. So only 15 new stores have been opened in 18 months since the publication of the aforementioned article, or fewer than one per month in the entire state as of March 2023. So Despite Maine's narrow vote to legalize recreational marijuana, the opening of these facilities commencing in earnest last uh, years later in 2021, the vast majority of Maine towns haven't yet opted in to having dispensaries in their towns. The towns that are closest comparable to Camden, <laughs> such as Kennebunkport, uh, Booth Bay Harbor, Bar Harbor, have already definitively said no. Therefore, Camden would become the first high-end summer resort town in Maine to have a cannabis dispensary. Unlike our friends in Kennebunkport and Booth Bay, um, however, Camden is consistently ranked nationally and by travel, travel publications as one of the two nicest towns in all of Maine. Organically and by intent, we have dominated the rankings with things the way they currently are. Are we willing to risk our standing as the first resort town to see what happens? We have no idea how dispensaries will affect our critical tourist economy and the businesses that it supports, our hotels, our B&Bs, our schooners, our restaurants, our boutiques, not to mention the impact on residents and whether they will continue to want to live and move here and continue to increase the value of our property or depress it. What is the rush? Other than I the need, fact that I two residents to please. open the shop profit from a flourishing industry that others have worked so hard to build. From a citizenry you, standpoint. I to, please, I need you to summarize. The rest, I will. Please. Um, from a citizenry standpoint, all of our townspeople who want to use legal marijuana can already by just driving five to ten minutes away. And so Camden gains nothing financially from this also. The state's own uh, marijuana lobby has noted that an um, impediment in towns opting in has been that all excise taxes go to the state, none go to the municipalities. And I have the status of that and the facts on that in this letter also. So one other thing that we have an issue with here in Camden is child care centers. When you're pregnant, you need to sign up for child care because there is such a lack of it. And by not being able to have access to childcare, we are getting people, they don't have options. They have to leave Camden for childcare. Having two pot shops in Camden would make that radius for potential childcare and for our families even smaller. So I'm asking that you please do not put this to a vote and we end this tonight. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, do we have another person way in the back of the room? Sorry, he did put his hand up first back there. He has, he has a longer walk. I'll, I'll be very, very brief. No hurry. <laughs> so I'm Taylor Pullman, uh, resigned at 72 Beaucaire Avenue in Camden. Uh, and I have, uh, have had a son who was quite successful in the Camden school system and in the community. People can do in private pretty much whatever they want to do. The question here is what as a public entity and as a town do we want to say um, to our kids about what's being proposed here. I was a board member at Watershed School, one of the schools within this target zone for nine years, and I currently um, am on the school board for Camden, Rockport. I do not speak 
for Watershed School. I don't speak for the Camden Rockport Board. I speak as a parent and as a resident. I don't think we need to send this signal. I don't have an issue with the state law. Well, I do have an issue with the state law, but I'm not here to say we should violate that by denying this completely. What I am saying is that the 500 foot exception puts us and our kids in a position where we're advocating for this, not simply allowing it. And by that I mean by, by overriding the state's, what I think is very logical uh, ruling and, and law, we are saying we want this facility in our community. And we're saying that to our community members and we're particularly saying it to our kids. That makes no sense to me. So I would say whatever you want to do with the approvals, but keep that thousand foot limit and keep this out of downtown because that's not what we want to say to our kids and to our community. Thank you very much. Thank you and thank you for your service to the, uh, the watershed and to the school board. Uh, there was other, now it's your turn. <laughs> it's kind of like the race of the hands. Right? Yeah, it's okay. My name is Kenneth Newman. Uh, I'm just here to say that you, you have, you? pardon, I'm a Camden resident. I live at 10 Sherman's Point Road. I lived in Florida the last 40 years. We bought a house here two years ago, and I moved up in April. I work at All Creatures Animal Hospital as a veterinarian in West Rockport. My wife owns the Small Wonder Gallery. Not sure familiar. So what I would like to say is we chose to relocate here from Florida. I've been here at least 45 times over 40 years. It's a wonderful place. I call it Whoville. The town gets together, sings Christmas carols. That don't go on in Florida. Florida, we have a lot of adult use businesses. We have exotic dance clubs, we have drugs, and we have a lot of problems. You don't have them here. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, John Prine says common sense, it don't make no sense that common sense don't make no sense no more. It's common sense to stay with what you have. Whether, we're not here to debate the legality of marijuana because apparently the state chose that. But what you are here to do is to see whether you want to preserve what's special about Camden that's kept people coming here from 40 years, that's got people moving into Camden, that's got it rated, it was mentioned for Travel Magazine, number one or two in Maine. It's in the top 10 small towns and harbors in the United States. And uh, as far as having pot shops, uh, it's not going to add anything to your town. And somebody did say something about Rockland. Rockland is having problems with juvenile delinquency. It happened all summer from what I saw. I don't know if any of those people were marijuana users, but the police has had problems and there's a rotating basis with vandalism in town. It's in the paper all the time. And uh, whether they're pot users or not, I don't know. But uh, you're welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> Way in the back of the room again. Just have to say, adult use marijuana isn't legal in Florida. Just to, it is in Maine, but it's not in Florida. I understand that. Okay. Hello, <laughs> Joyce Lawrence, and I live in on Timbercliff Drive. But I had a, a shop in town for. Hello, Ken. <laughs> he was one of our artists. Uh, about anyway, long, long time. And Ben, I, I, you know, I think what you're doing probably for some people is really a good thing, and. I already think that it's covered where it is. And I just now Googled how many towns and cities are in Maine, and I came up, it said 721. And if there are 65 of those that are selling pot, wow, well, that's, yeah, anyway. I guess what I'm saying is that I don't think it's that popular or whatever. What am I saying? Uh, <laughs> the downtown business, they, <laughs> sorry. Oh, the feeling, Joyce. I'm sorry. The downtown businesses are coming back. They're always closed in the winter time, and I don't know if 16. You said 16 shops that are right downtown. That surprises me. But where did you say 16? 11 downtown. Oh. Okay. It's just the way it's always been. And I think there's some great shops that are coming in. There's some exciting things that are happening. It's, it's a young town in many, many ways, and the retail is strong. 
I know that the rents have gone up and some of the problems are national problems and COVID problems, but I'm really positive about what our town is going to look like. And I don't really think that we need any marijuana in the downtown. Because if I wanted it, I can go to Northport or I can go to Rockland or anywhere I want to buy it, I can get it there. I think that's what I wanted to say. I'm <laughs> that was very well done. No, you. please. What the, thank you. And this, for, yeah, right there, you got your hand up real fast. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Lewis, uh, 74 Washington Street in Camden. Jeff, you're rather tall, so we try to stay close to the microphone. I'll stay close. I'm sorry. All right. Or I can hold it. Yes, you may. Hi. Um, so I have my opinions about marijuana. I, I don't want these stores in Camden. But aside from that, I have a philosophical idea about our, our zoning laws. That I think we have our zoning laws for a reason. And we shouldn't change them lightly. And if, if we do change them, they should be for reasons that we overwhelmingly find benefit the community. And for issues that instantly bring about acrimony and controversy, we are already there with this proposal very quickly. This is, by any definition, highly controversial. And for this to go forward, we need to change our laws. I love donkeys. But I can't keep donkeys in my backyard in Camden. And I would not have the audacity to ask you to change the laws for me to love my donkeys in downtown Camden. So what I hope happens tonight is you as our leaders end this tonight. The second best, no, please don't clap. Ladies and gentlemen, please. The second best thing is you give it to the voters and we will end it in June. Thank you very much. You. Do we have other, please? Well, we got a whole bunch of people raising their hands. But. Yeah. Welcome. Hello. Uh, I'm Aaron Meal. I live at 26 Curtis. I'll be quick. Um, I'm speaking in favor of allowing this issue to be decided by the voters of Camden, and here are a few reasons why. Year-round businesses that employ people above minimum wage and attract walking traffic to the downtown are good for our local economy. Rockland, as Mark stated, which currently has six marijuana stores, has had 40% real, uh, real estate value increase, the largest in Maine last year. Again, not saying that it has anything to do with the marijuana stores, I'm just saying it's obviously not detrimental to the town in any way. <clears throat> Tourists love to have the option to enjoy locally made products that are unusual, boutique, and special. They enhance their experiences while visiting. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna ask one more time for silence when somebody's speaking. Please give each person the respect. There are, there are local people who make alcohol and people love them. People come here to enjoy their spirits. How is marijuana any different? Uh, alcohol is responsible for far more death and danger to young people and all people than marijuana. The National Institute of Health will say that on their website. The CDC will say it on their website. And we allow, to be, we allow it to be sold and served all over our town, next to our schools, and in family-friendly restaurants. It has not destroyed our community. Um, in fact, tonight, I think that you guys approved three liquor licenses with absolutely no talking from anybody or any detraction from it. How is this uh, obviously a often said safer product that is legal in the state of Maine, how is, how is it possible that we wouldn't want our voters at least to have the chance to make that decision? It's legal under state law. Our town has voted twice in favor of marijuana, first for state legalization and second to allow cultivation. Shouldn't we be allowed to let the voters decide? And I just wanted to add one comment that's not in my written testimony that's a little more personal, which is like, there are a lot of harsh statements and there's a lot of vitriol and that's fine. You know, people feel passionate about this and that's great. And, and I, I want people to feel passionate about Camden, but 
What I don't want is a small group of people telling all of us what Camden should be like and that their version of Camden is the version of Camden that's the right version. I think that the entire town should be able to weigh in on that kind of issue. We, we all are part of this community and, and we should all be allowed to weigh in. And so keeping this from the voters seems like a really, I don't know, exclusive kind of thing to do. It's, it's not a very inclusive process. So luckily we have democracy here and we're, I think, one of the only towns left in Maine that is still, uh, that is still a town vote. Town meeting form of government. Town meeting form of government because we value our democracy here. So why would we have a very, very small group of people sitting in this room decide when it's so easy to put it on the ballot and let the people decide? That's all. Thank you very much. Please, please, please. <laughs> I know everybody's very passionate, but it's going to be wasting time. And the reason I said it is because next thing you know, we're going to be booing somebody, and now I'm going to have to throw everybody out of the room, and I'm not strong enough to do that. So with that, thank you very much for coming. Thank but you I guys think we so have much. more hands popping up right in the time. corner. Is that Chris? Yes. Yeah. Hi, my name is Chris Nolan, and I am a Camden resident. <clears throat> In 1983 or 81, my father came back from the FBI Academy and made a very broad, exciting statement when he said, in 20 years it was discussed that smoking marijuana would be legal and cigarettes would be a misdemeanor. And how outlandish that was in 1983. The other thing that I do for work is I review policies and procedures. And right now, at this point, I don't think this ordinance as it is is fully baked. <clears throat> there are some items that are missing. I just did a quick search while sitting here and thinking about some of the facts that were laid out by the person who went ahead and drafted the petition. I believe if I'm correct, and he said that there are 62 towns, and he found none of them had 500, um, 1,000 feet. I'm unaware of that. Right. I, I, I agree you might be unaware, and this is where there's a bit of an issue, where the current ordinance is written by someone who wants that thing, and they didn't really give the full amount of information that was not otherwise self-serving. So I just, as I'm an auditor, and I know I didn't do a huge sample size. I did the sample size while I was sitting here. In Wilton, it's true. 500 feet is what they use. However, the three other ones that I looked at, Howland, Kittery, Elliot, they're a thousand feet. And one says, we'll go with what the state says, which is the thousand feet. In addition, in Howland, not only do they say a thousand feet, but they also say 2,500 feet from any other establishment that's there. And looking at some of the other policies that were out there for Kittery or Howland or Elliot, again, towns that have allowed this, they have a very well developed ordinance around the marijuana stores. Um, <clears throat> there's exceptions, there's revocation information, there's violations and penalties. Basically, it is well-baked. It's a descriptive policy ordinance specific to them that might be less self-serving of one particular business, but it might be more inclusive of what people want in town. So I would say at this point, it isn't ready for public consumption. <clears throat> it's not. Thank you. It's only half baked. Thank you, Chris. Thank so. you very much. You. Those are just facts. One second. I want to continue with the public discussion first, and we can correct things if you want to. Um, Stuart. 
I thought I recognized the hair. Yeah, I'm, I'm catching up with you. I'm trying to catch up with you. Uh, my name is Stuart Smith. Uh, my family owns um, quite a bit of real estate in downtown Camden, and we probably own more uh, rental real estate than anybody else in town. Um, we have never had a problem renting any of our spaces for retail. Um, there are, there's turnover, um, but uh, we generally have two or three people calling us about a place that might not even be available to rent. So I'm not sure where the uh, 16 vacant spaces are in Camden, but I'm certainly not aware of that. And, and we have one space that was going to be empty, and we had six people call us looking for retail stores for clothing, retail stores for footwear, uh, retail stores for uh, pet shop. Um, Camden has a very strong economy. Um, it's one of the best economies uh, along the coast. And um, so it's not like we need another uh, open up another store category. Um, so I'm very much against this. I don't think it's what Camden needs. I'm especially against the 500 foot rule, which I think was thrown in there specifically so they could get a store in the downtown area. So I definitely do not think this should go to a vote until it's, the ordinance is really looked at a lot harder. And I think you should probably have a committee, if you're gonna to try to put this on a ballot, I think it should have a committee that writes the ordinance, not the person that wants to have a change in the ordinance so they can have a business here. So I would say this is not ready to go to the uh, ballot in June. That if you're going to send it to the ballot in June, you should definitely change the 500 to 1,000 feet and follow the state rules. As far as a cash business goes, I think what Matthew Levin was talking about was the OCC. Um, I sit on a bank board, and it's totally illegal for our bank to take any deposits mm -hmm. from narcotic stores. And that is a federal law. Um, marijuana is still a federal offense. Um, it may have been approved by Maine, but it is not a federally um, approved law. So I don't think the can town of Camden should be allowing something that is not federally approved. So thank you very much. Thank you, Stuart. Good to see you. Uh, any other hands to raise that I missed? With that, I'm going to, oh, I just saw, is that Jesse? I'll be very brief. Is that, uh, you? Is that you, Jesse? It's me, Jesse Bifulco, uh, Camden resident. Hello, everybody. Introduce your name to the mic, please. Jesse Bifulco, I'm a Camden resident, and uh, the last time I addressed this august body was for my famous article two during which I wanted to uh, have the esteemed privilege of serving vegan meals at my bed and breakfast. And uh, some of the comments that were made tonight were very interesting about how, you know, we should let the democratic process rule. Um, you know, so Oops. I think that's a good thing. And there were a lot of good comments here about how, you know, maybe this ordinance wasn't, uh, it, the, the present ordinance isn't really well complete or finished. Our ordinance was really tailored. It would have really just allowed us to serve dinner at our bed and breakfast, a, a small little dining room um, surrounded by other rental, you know, bed and breakfast areas. But, you know, strangely enough, the board said no. The board said no. They wouldn't let it go to a vote. So we had to go around um, to every member of town and get a signature. We had to get a signature from everybody. And it was one of the best experiences of my life because I got to meet everybody in town, people who didn't want to meet me. <laughs> so it was exciting. It was fun. And when we got the, the petition signatures, we finally got enough petition signatures. Uh, the uh, past chairman of the board said, no, we're not going to put it on the ballot. You know, we spent hours. I lost so much weight, you wouldn't recognize me. I was skinny. But I think that the only point I want to make is that um, you, you, with zoning, uh, you don't have to say yes. You don't have to, you know. Uh, it should be well conceived, it should be well thought out, it should be well researched. And it is a good point to, to say that the person who, ha who stands the most pecuniary gain, the, the most monetary gain, perhaps isn't the best person to write the, the ordinance. 
you know, but you, you, you know, they said no to me and maybe that was unfair. But zoning is arbitrary to a large degree. Yep. Okay, yep. but thanks. Appreciate Good to see you, it. Jesse. Good to yeah. see you. Was, was it? <laughs> I forgot all about the Windward House. Yeah, that, sorry. Yes, I it, to talk about that so it was. It wasn't this board, but it was the board of select board in Camden. That, any other? Uh, did I miss any hands? Please. My name's Karen Luthi. I live at 10 Union Street in Camden. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't planning to speak tonight, but I am in favor of letting this issue come to a vote. And, you know, thank you for the reminder about the bed and breakfast serving food because I was really in favor of that. And I think I went around gathering signatures, if I remember correctly. And I also was in favor of a certain Rockport hotel opening up when there was so much detraction. Corinthian columns. I won't discuss that, but all the same, you know, I do, I am in favor of businesses being welcomed to our community, for our community being vibrant and forward looking. And I would also say that I went on that walk that counted all, the, all of those businesses that were closed or um, empty. So I can vouch for those numbers as well. And so can my dog. Um, <laughs> But I, I would also like to say that as a person who, who rarely um, makes use of cannabis, I do buy it, but I don't necessarily buy it for myself. I buy it for my adult friends and family who are visiting from out of town, who can't buy it in, in the places where they live. I buy it for my elderly family members who have cancer and are going through chemotherapy. I buy it for my colleagues who are going through chemotherapy. I buy it for my friends who are like unable to sleep at night because they have menopause or they're aging and they just cannot sleep. So this is, you know, this is an adult product. We are adults here and adults should be able to weigh in on this decision in an adult way without the kind of moralizing and personal attacks that I have heard in this debate. So Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you very much. Um, any other hands that I miss? Well, not, no, not seeing any more hands. I will close. Uh, well, you can talk to the select board when we're finished, Jeremy, um, if that's okay. Um, uh, with that, I would, did, did I miss any hands? There's a hand up on Zoom. Hold on. Also, are we going to read the, there are some letters that we received that specifically asked that they were read into the record? No. We have, we have to read them all. I mean, that's why I decided to, to have them printed out and put on the on the on the town uh, for anybody to review tomorrow, especially the ones that came in exceptionally late. It's but, always been our practice in the past to, I mean, some letters, not everybody wants their letter read into the record, but it's always been the practice in the past. I don't. I can see it. that it's a difficult issue. Is. I just feel like we it's, should it's, talk about that in some future. Yeah. Time. Yeah, I think, I think it's, well, we've done it in the past, and the planning well, board certainly does couple, it. A couple of things we need to handle better, I think, when information is submitted, because we did get information as, as little as two hours before this meeting. And honestly, I don't spend full time looking at my phone to get emails just before a meeting when I'm trying to concentrate on running the meeting. So, uh, and many of those were wanted to be read also. So you, you got to be fair across the board. But I think it's a good issue. Well, we accept, I mean, I would say that we accept. If somebody is on Zoom right now, then they are able, and our policy has been to allow virtual participation in the same way that are. we allow people to participate here. And so when somebody says, I mean, in the, in the planning board, I see it happen all the time, and I've certainly seen it in these meetings too, that somebody sends a letter and says, I'm not able to be there. Mm -hmm. Can this be mm -hmm. read into the record? That's... Um. Been done. I, I suggest not. If that's what the board wants to do, I think you should read all 32 of them. I mean, some letters are sent. So, I, can I suggest yeah. before you yeah. debate this, yes. um, Victor? Yeah, I see him. Yeah, yeah. He, he had his hand up. And, and he's on. Is he available? Yeah. Victor? Victor? Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, not really. Not really. Can you? Can you hear me? No, we need no. Microphone. There's a microphone over here. Take this one. Is, the, is it that? 
Uh, well, that we're using. Oh. It's not on, Jeremy. I can hear him here. Victor? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, yes. Can you hear me now? I'm deaf. Go ahead. Go ahead, uh, I want to address two points. One is the false comparison between Rockland, Belfast, and Cam. I think we don't allow Burger King's McDonald's when it is in Camden. Victor, Victor, could you did you identify did you identify your name and, and residency? Oh, yes. uh, Victor residency? Thank you. Uh, and, and so we are not alone in Camden, uh, Burger King, McDonald's, and Wendy's, but yet they are in Rockland and Belfast. So the question then becomes: Why would we allow? these fox stores in Camden, but not, you know, the McDonald's or Burger King. We've made a decision as to how we want our town to be. And it certainly doesn't mean that we want to have fox stores. There's a second issue for me personally. And um, the, the Camden Yacht Club is within the range of 500, uh, a mile range, 500 yards of the uh, potential store. I'm not speaking for the club, although I'm a member, and uh, we have a summer program, a sailing program. I'm on the board of that sailing program, and I'm not speaking for the board because I know Mark Haber did send a letter in. But we're going to have morning and afternoon sessions this year for the first time. So there's going to be breaks between the morning session, the afternoon session, which will be probably a lunch session. These kids are going to wander around, go outside. I've had kids in, in, in the program for years, and they take great, they walk out the long way to go to Camden Cone, and I never have concern about that because I understand it's very safe. This is not going to be the case any longer. We're going to have a situation where parents who are coming for the summer, who are going to have their kids with the sale program, are going to be genuinely concerned about the kids being able to wander off into this particular store. I do believe that when you define school, the club and special settlement program has to be within that definition. And by virtue of what I heard this afternoon this evening, it's only 400 feet away from our program for the summer. So I think as a special matter, it would definitely violate being next to a school. If you define school as involving young children who are in an educational facility. So I think this, that there is really no compelling reason to offer here for two stores, not just one, but two within a very small, condensed radius of people. I don't understand why Camden should now change its culture and allow. <coughs> for stores which doesn't add to the overall culture and vitality of the city. This is a private uh, 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 business. The person who wrote this uh, ordinance wrote it specifically so he would qualify on the exception of the setback or whatever it is. Okay? This is simply not the way to do this. There would have to be independent review. There would have to be studies done to indicate that there would be no adverse effect, as well as probably a very small police force in our town. This could bring about all kinds of social uh, uh, dislocations that would not be sufficient for the police force that we have to handle this. I don't see why we should do this. It has not presented a compelling reason. Other than some gentleman who has already two stores, one to put two more stores in Camden. Why not put those two stores in Belfast and in Rockland? Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Thank you very much. Yeah. Good evening. Um, uh, is, there's no other hands raised that I see. Uh, back to your question, Allison. Um, if the board uh, prefers to uh, read those, that's its decision. I don't agree because some of them came in like hours ago and I didn't know which ones they are because I just saw them by title and I didn't, you know, so we run the risk of uh, mine was requested and it didn't happen, especially the recent ones that came in. But um, if the board wants to go through the, the list and figure out who asked that and request that, we can, that's I mean, there are, I would have given, 
I guess, different advice. I am to whom? not Chriso, a planning board member who probably believes that since the planning board always does that, I mean, I think they know that they're running. Yeah, I, the, I, I, guess, some, I guess, you know, some of these people might have been here on Zoom if they didn't believe that. I'm only aware currently of, you know, Chris is the one that's coming to mind. Um, we, we have many emails sent. That say that? Did, no. Did anybody specifically request that theirs be read into the record? Yes, some did. There's there was a few. Did, there was some, yes. Chris There was some. There was In some. the body of his letter to Chris mm -hmm. yep. did. Yeah, but the, the issue is that we haven't, we haven't prepared. I mean, sure. I, personally, I think there's, the volume is too great for this setting. They are in the packet, and we can get the rest on the town website. That satisfies me. That came in earlier. Well, let me, let me clarify. Just, like, many of them good, good question, Tom. Let me clarify with that. But one, one second. Uh, you made a proper point. Did you say website? You want to put these on the website? We can we can have them available in whatever. Oh, okay, then that, they would be on the public record if they're put on the website. Yes, in the packet we can add them to the packet. I, I, I question that only Tom because I had said print them out and put them on the counter. Okay, fine, that may not be effective, but if, if Audrey can wants to go through the work to put on the website, that's public record. It's it, no, it's especially it's not so much for the ones that came in earlier because there was time to consider that and they went in the packet for the most part. Mm, um, mm. But for the ones, for the people that would have liked to be here tonight, if they could have, but they sent something at the last minute and said, their hope is not that we will go to the town office tomorrow and read their letter, it's that we will use it to cons in our decision-making process as part of the public hearing. So I guess I, I, I only see a few that are in that category. Um, Again, I leave, you know, late I, and not being in the packet, but asking to be part of the public record. It's not a hill I'm going to die on, but it's a. I mean, Chris O specifically arrived into my inbox this afternoon. I, re I read it. Yeah, Is me too. Is there any others? Me too. I read it also. I, re I read all the emails. No, I, I read them all. I just all... noticed that that one said wanting it to be part of the public yeah, record. I, I, it's not in I the... think we're splitting hairs. I disagree, but if the board is, wants to. Over, I'm, I'm I not the, issue, the issue I have is is basically a lot of people came tonight and made the effort to come right. and to share their thoughts with us and I'm really thankful for that. A lot of people took time to send us emails and I'm also thankful for that. I'm not entirely sure that anything in the letters we would write we would read would add any more information to what we've already received. Yeah. So I think it's a fair assumption that we're going to make those all the messages we receive, we're going to make them available on the town website or print them, but I'm not sure that reading them would add anything to the current okay. conversation. Pro, if you have pro, some, or, pro or con, by the way. Pro or both. con, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think we've, mm -hmm. we've had a, yeah. a full spectrum of pro cons. Right. Um, it's a tough one. I agree. It's a tough one. Sure. It, it's but, personally but, but, not going to change my, my mind. I'm not doing it specifically because no. I think it's going to no. change. No. no. Any, no. I don't know what everybody no, we'll, else We'll thinks, put them so. against more aggressive, put them on the website so everybody's a part of the public record. We have read them. We did receive them. I read the ones that came in two hours before tonight, uh, tonight's meeting. Uh, it's not a, we have a deadline for putting things in the packet for obvious reasons because of manpower. But with that, I want to I'm going to close the uh, public hearing portion of the meeting, and I think before we go to the to the um, to the select board, I think this great audience is showing up tonight needs to applaud itself. I thought. <laughs> We, we, uh, we uh, do appreciate the passion of this issue, and, and, uh, but your, your, your attendance, either by Zoom or other many emails we received, is greatly appreciated. So with that, we're, we're, again, there will be no further input from the public unless the board member has a question of somebody who's spoken earlier. Jeremy, did you want to say something before we get into uh, deliberation of the board? Um. No, and I appreciate um, some of the comments about, um, I think, you know, that maybe they, the proposed by, proposal by Mark wasn't thought out. Um, I think that's coming from a perspective of not understanding that we already have an existing, existing licensing ordinance um, in place. Um, so when, Chris, I appreciate you did a, a, a bunch of work today on looking at what's going on and what other communities have done. A lot of communities, when this first came about, this issue, 
they lumped everything into their marijuana licensing or their permitting process. What we had done private, previously on the cultivation side is, and I mentioned earlier, we created a marijuana licensing ordinance. And so within that, if this piece gets passed, that other licensing ordinance applies. So say Mark would eventually open up a shop here, it would have to get licensed annually by the town. Um, there's a public hearing process for that. There's a revocation process for that. Um, if he violates state law or any conditions that the select board would impose on that facility, um, they can revoke that license. It's not transferable. Um, there's inspections done annually by myself, the code officer, the police chief, the fire chief. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that because it's not just, you know, it gets approved by the town, by the code enforcement officer approves it and, and they open. And they have to come annually to the select board for a license uh, renewal annually. And it can be revoked very easily. Um, and they have to provide us with all, everything that they need to provide to the state. So, the, you know, a lot of towns looked at security measures. All that stuff is required and we required as part of our licensing piece. Um, so that would be in there and part of the packet going to the select board annually. So it's not like Mark didn't look at it or I didn't contemplate when Mark approached me about drafting an ordinance like this that he was going to do it. I, these are the questions that I think about. You know, can, how do we license it? How does it play out annually? And we already have that in place um, in Camden. So I just want to share that and remind the board and the Thank public you. of that. Thank you That's, very much, Jeremy. Yeah. With that board, um, obviously we face the decision of moving this uh, uh, this item forward to uh, a final draft and, and, and a proposal to put it to the public. Uh, I appreciate any comments from the board's perspective on the matter. I'm Tom, I saw your two fingers there. Thank you. <laughs> I, I think we've heard a lot of good uh, comments tonight. Um, what this comes down to, in my opinion, is um, what we want Camden to be. And, and Camden has never shied away from making our own decisions, mm -hmm. just because Belfast or Rockland have done it a certain way doesn't mean we necessarily have to. Um, the, uh, lost my train of thought there. Uh, I know the feeling. Yeah, I, I would suggest that you know other regions have different neighborhoods. Um, Brooklyn is different than Manhattan. Malibu is different than Venice. Um, uh, Rockland is different than Camden. And because of that, um, you know, and, and because we've chosen. Uh, as Camden to be distinct from those other municipalities, municipalities in our own region, um, we need to decide if this is right for Camden. All those other arguments aside, you know, uh, for our residents, for our children, our image, whatever else you want to lump in there, our economy, there's many. And I think that's where the board needs to focus as we debate and decide this issue. Thank you, Tom. Other comments? Anyone? I We're probably dumped. like everybody. I was wanted to go last. Um. Oh, you, 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 um, you can, of course. You, you, you can, of course, go last. I, I think there's obviously, a, uh, I think, and I don't want to give any, any lectures on town meeting form of government, but that's what we are. Uh, for us as select board, we don't get to make a lot of decisions on what is passed or not passed, but not a town council, or you probably know better, a city council like Rockland where they make decisions and it doesn't go to the electorate. That is not the form of government this, this town has chosen. And I think, am I correct, and we're the second largest town in the state that still has the town meeting form of government. Uh, the only bigger one is Topsom, by the way. Uh, not that that means anything, but Camden, people of Camden <laughs> have maintained the town meeting form of government because of that. Um, and I think they expect the select board to, yes, make sure it's done correctly, legally, um, thought through the wording, the process, before it's, if, if we agree to send it to the voters. It's, from my perspective, it's, there are occasions when it has happened in the past, when you can debate, when things have not gone to voters. Um, 
I'm not going to express my opinion because I sit in a position of relative authority to weigh on that today, but I think there is some, it, 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 you have to understand we are not the legislative body. We do not. I think I always uh, talk to people who are interested in me in the select board and I say, um, just, be, just understand what your responsibilities and authority are. Do not come to this board with an agenda because you're one person. In a select board, you learn to count to three real quickly. Uh, but it's to, but to move things forward, to bring it to the electorate, regardless of my, regardless of my personal opinion on marijuana or anything, um, I, I think that's the core of where I come from, sitting here as a member of this august group of five people. Um, we, we need to, we need to, you know, keep things at a, at a light level, not get passionate, overly passionate, except to you know, express what we feel. I get that. Um, like I said, I, I, I've sat here and been adamantly opposed to some ordinance recommendations we've done in the past, but that was a personal feeling, and I didn't, didn't allow that to come to my, when I come in here, I leave my politics at the door. And I think that's essential. So for me, it's, it, it, it does take quite a bit, and it has happened where we've not sent something to the voters for them to make the decision. Just put yourself in our position. If you heard, 50, 100 people coming at you hard on a, on a matter that you expect us to reject. That is one very, very small percentage of a 3,000 voter electorate. It's not a big number. Uh, and it happens, to, there is no issue that I've faced at this board where there wasn't some degree of, um, of uh, um, passion for us to vote something down or not allow it to go forward. And there's, there's no item that we faced in that regard. So again, I, I want to emphasize that because, again, I'm sure every one of the five of us have a different opinion about various things of alcohol, uh, tobacco, uh, marijuana, certainly, and who knows what's coming next uh, down beyond my lifetime, I hope. But um, uh, that's, 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 where I, that's where I stand on the matter. Others. Um, yeah, I mean, I ultimately I favor this going to voters. Um, I don't like the general cop out that sometimes happens where um, difficult issues, you know, the select board just says, oh, we'll let the voters decide because having been a voter um, on many, many issues that I just arrive to the ballot box and, and see them. A lot of the time, I'm looking for the recommendation of, of somebody else that has done more research. And so I, I don't think it's fair just to you know, send everything difficult or complicated off to voters and say, um, you know, we'll let them decide. Because I do think a lot of the time, when you see something on the ballot, you do see it as a recommendation. Um, and that our job is to put things before the voters that can be understood so people feel like they can vote meaningfully. Um, I hear it all the time. People feel really frustrated because they feel like they accidentally voted one way when they really wanted another way. Um, this one, I feel like there is no amount of everybody sitting here debating that's going to change that many minds. Um, I think that there are certain things I would have done differently about the ordinance language, maybe, but that they're not so complicated that somebody you know, can't understand them. We're basically taking the um, model ordinance um, from the state and saying we're going to apply it in these areas if you vote yes, and um, the the 1,000 foot buffer has been brought down to 500. The other thing about Camden is this licensing process. I was on the um, committee when we did the cultivation ordinance and it took us a really, really long time and there were people from all sides of that issue that ultimately came to a recommendation and there, there were so many rules through the state um, that it provided a lot of the security that people were concerned about.
But then the one area where the select board here in Camden does have a lot of power, we have very little power in almost every way, but we do have a lot of power in the, the business, business licensing department. I haven't always liked how that's been used, but every few years, some, usually a, a bar, um, has been like put on trial at a select board meeting and threatened to have their, you know, their license revoked or not renewed. And so there, there is that process baked into this. I think a lot of it is gonna come down to you know, the store and, and what's appropriate. It comes down to where in town it's located and how it's run and the types of things that people like to bring up at, at Zoning Board of Appeals, you know, special exception hearings and things where special conditions can be put on it. And I think those things are different for different parts of town and that they're, um, if, if voters, you know, are really uncomfortable with this, they can easily, they have a means of saying, I don't like the way, you know, they can, they can vote no and they can say, come back, you know, some other time with a better ordinance. Um, or they can vote yes and then still have the peace of mind that they would be able to come to an additional public hearing where an actual license is being considered and they could tell the select board, whoever happens to be elected at the time, they'll be able to say, you know, I have all of these concerns because of this program here or this program there and the select board, whoever has been most recently elected will have that power to be able to say yes or no or with conditions at that time. So um, this, it's, you know, an uncomfortable position, but um, I have to talk to my kids all the time about things that I think are healthy for them or not healthy, um, alcohol and cigarettes and marijuana and these vaping things that they all seem to be exposed to at the middle school. Or it's, it's a conversation that's, that's constant and it doesn't have anything to do with whether something is legal or, mm. or not legal most of the time. So I, I recognize the complexity and it's a hard one, but I feel comfortable sending it to the voters. I think. Thank you, Allison. Sophie? Um... I, my, my, my thinking is, if, if I weren't on a select board, I would like to vote on this. And I think it's an, it's an important social issue. Um, and I would love for the town to, to vote on this. And, and I'm not sending it to the voters because it's a hard issue. I'm send, my recommendation to send it to the voters is because I think we're all building this community. Each one of us has a voice in building this community. And we owe it to all the voters in Camden to have the chance to express themselves by saying yay or nay. Um, I do think that the wording is fine as it is. Um, I think people will, because it's such a hot issue, I think people will do their research and talk to other people. I also encourage people of different opinions mm -hmm. to meet and to talk about this. Um, I, I don't, I never believe that you cannot change somebody else's opinion. I think we should always, I'm, I'm an optimistic, I guess. Right. But, but I think to me, the, the bottom line is, as a voter, uh, I would like to be able to vote on this issue. Stephanie, any comments or not? It's your call. So I have thought about this so much imagine in not just this week but from the beginning of time that I came into this world and have had to deal with these issues from the very moment I entered this world um, I feel like these sort of narcotics and things are so easily accessible um, I am hesitant to just read what we have and think that it can't be better um, and this is the first go around so I do look at it and wonder you know, if we had a longer view on it instead of this six week, I think, sort of push, mm -hmm. what could we have come up with that may allow it to come into, store, into the town um, and be a little bit less divisive? 
Um, and I'm ready to vote. Cool. Do they would uh, any other comments? Uh, just back to my original point, um, you know, we do as a board, and obviously everybody can vote the way they choose, but we do as a board choose to restrict other entities from Camden. Um, so to say that we're just going to send it to voters because it's controversial is not in keeping with uh, precedent of this board. Um, we've consistently uh, denied other businesses the right to come here, and uh, we are elected leaders of Camden. So um, if you feel strongly, obviously, that you want to send this to voters, that's your choice. But um, this isn't out of precedent for us to make our own decision and to decide what, to my original point, we want Camden to be, what the image is that we want to send, what's best for our residents, our children, our economy, our visitors, et cetera. Thank you, Tom. I would just say that having being on the board when we did finally get around to restricting fast food restaurants in portions of the town, we weren't allowed to do that in all of the town. We did have to carve out a, a district um, where they were allowed. Um, you know, a lot of people had assumed that fast food restaurants weren't allowed in Camden, but it wasn't <laughs> actually the case. Um, but when we did come up with that ordinance, we we sent it to voters to ask them if they wanted to restrict those businesses. Um, and I don't know, there were, there were a lot of interesting points made on, on all sides, and I, mm -hmm. I totally agree with you about not just sending it because it's controversial. Um, that this is our, you know, our, our chance to say we, we, you know, we could stop it here, and there are things that I would choose in this moment. I just want to, to point out, though, that like every every person has spoke about things that could be better, could be different. Yeah. So I don't think that not sending it to the voters is saying, no, you're not gonna vote on it. It's, I'm just wondering if it could be better. Yeah. Could it be written better? Could it be zoned better? Could it be put forth in a less divisive way because we have so many divisive things going on in the town why push this through so quickly when it doesn't have to be as divisive? It could be written in a different way, zoned in a different way to make it allowable, but in a less divisive way. I thought a lot about that. Like the, the, do I go with my urge to try to pick apart this and make it a little bit better in my view or is that just by prolonging it? I guess I would kind of like to see what the residents say about this version. And then if it's very clear, you know, if it's, if it's kind of in the middle, then that would, that would make, no matter, you know, if it's no, just by a little bit, that would make me think it was worth it to come back and revise and look at it again. But I think we could still ask voters, what do you think about this version? And because I think dragging it out with you know, my opinions about how to make it better might make it actually more divisive. It's possible, it's always possible. I believe also we have, where, as Jeremy said earlier, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeremy, um, the approval to move it forward, we still have to look at the final language and that's another decision point downstream on going before that goes to warrant. The ballot language? The ballot language. But, it, but not the ordinance language. It would just, language. right, it would just be the, how we put it on the ballot, not Right. That's correct. That's correct. What I'm talking about is substantive I see, I see. changes that could be made yep. that would make it a little bit less divisive. Yeah, I, I think the issue, honestly, from my perspective of the marijuana retail is the issue. That is the divisive uh, element and nothing, in my opinion, nothing we do with 1,500 or zoning is going to make it any less divisive. Uh, there are people who obviously very passionately feel it's dangerous. We've heard that loudly. Uh, we've also heard people say, let the voters vote on it. Uh, the issue is retail marijuana. You can wordsmith something or try to, you're not going to sell it. If I'm against marijuana, you're not going to sell it to me. And, and I agree. We've done this a number of times on the select board where we've um, pushed something down the road to only wind up in the same position X months later. 
isn't this a very important topic to maybe take a chance on that? I'm in, sorry, in a seeing, very important topic what? Isn't this a very important topic to try to kick the can around to see if there is something? Because I have, I am a member of so many downtown groups and I have had more people say, you know, if it was not in the areas that's being proposed, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have any care about voting it in. That can be changed. So mm -hmm. I'm just saying that would be a substantive change. Yeah. No, I don't agree. <laughs> I think I we could agree. probably remove a district, but. Well, you could yeah. Remove a district, you could, um, that's not a substantive change. We still have the ability to. We argue to, all day whether it's a substantive yeah, yeah, change right, or not. Right, right, but, but I, I don't think it is. And, uh, well, that's exactly it. So we're like sitting here thinking, like, <laughs> is it? Like, we, this is our first conversation we've had on it. Does it need to go to vote right now is what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it shouldn't I go understand. to vote. I'm yeah. saying no, is it right now get, ready, yeah. ready to, go to, vote yep. to be. Yep. yep, I get your point. That's I get it. Your I point. Mean, I think that there are probably some applicants or the people proposing this that might have said, let's, let's wait and take longer because I do think the chances of it passing would be higher if it were, mm -hmm. you know, we did a really long process. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I could just talk forever because I, I do agree mm -hmm. with you in a lot of ways yeah. that it yeah. could be made better and it could be made more likely to to pass or to have a really strong feeling about what exactly could make it palatable for people. I just think it might take a really long time and we may also learn quite a bit by just, you know, having it go strongly one way or the other. And at this, this point I've started, I've gotten so much input from people that um, I've questioned, I don't know where the, I don't know where the voters are gonna fall mm. on this mm. anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and so I guess I just kind of want to know. Um, yeah, me too. Anyway. I don't know. Motion. So what are we, so yeah, what sorry. are we deciding, sorry, what are we deciding tonight? You're deciding to uh, approve or disapprove, moving this forward to final language for a warrant discussion on the 4th or 18th, 18th. I believe 18th would be the last warrant time. Discussion. Well, so warrant discussion. Well, warrant, warrant, warrant approval. Warrant. Warrant approval, right. So if we approve it, it will be on the ballot in some shape or form tonight. If we. Yes. Yeah. And the next time yes, you'll yes, see yes, it, yes, it'll that's, be the, the language. That's in on the in some shape or form. Correct. That's to Stephanie's point about some key issues. Can you state that one more time? Because I'm uh, it was, was just the, kind oh, of like no, I'm sorry. so many people. I, I think I interrupted him. <clears throat> uh, he was just saying if, if we approve it tonight, it will be on the warrant in some shape or form. Yes. Yeah, so I just we, wanted we're debating that to be the, We're debating the form. <laughs> You're pointing about the. Mm -hmm. Zoning is, uh, is could be form changes if we go forward with it. Well, she'd need to make that. We'd need to say that tonight, though. Yes. No, we don't need to decide that tonight. You do need to yeah. decide that oh, tonight. Oh, we do. Yes. Oh, I'm so, sorry. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm so the next time you see it, it'll be part of the sorry. warrant. For sorry. I'm just be, saying that I've done my yeah, homework it. on this, and yeah, I'm not good, just good speaking no, out good. of the side I'm, of my I'm, mouth. This I'm, is okay. super important, and we have to know exactly mm -hmm. what we're sending to voters. Mm -hmm. And we're sitting here not even knowing what we're sending to voters, for God's sakes. Well, we're sending an ordinance change to the voters that we, do, that we outlined tonight. And the, the, the only thing we haven't approved is the language that will go on the warrant itself. That's the difference. We, and if we want to change any of the other, anything, any of the zoning, if we want to change mm, any mm. of it. I mean, tonight would have been the time to come here. I thought about coming and proposing that it um, be a ZBA special, special exception mm -hmm. instead of this process, because we listed it as a special exception for the cultivation businesses. Right. Went through that around and around in my head a million times, and then I decided that really the licensing process is very similar to the ZBA process and that ultimately I would want that for a time when I'm not on the select board too, I would want that decision and the public hearing and the licensing to happen with the people that I had most recently elected it's to be able to come and do that rather than having to go to the, you know, the ZBA, which is a changing group of appointed people. So 
I mean, that would have been the thing that I would have changed in it. Um, mm -hmm. the, but, the, but the district thing, too, is, you yeah. know. But I think the one thing that I would want to discuss with the warrant article is whether it makes sense. We've been doing um, the way that it's printed is the recommendations. Mm -hmm. And so that usually when people are looking at a, or at a warrant article and deciding how to vote, they look at the recommendations you know, planning board, five zero, select board, budget committee, whatever, and they don't assume that that recommendation means these people supported it going to voters. They, they assume that the, the recommendation language means you that it. you recommend passing. And so that's where I think here it might make sense if, if there are people on the board and that support it being voted on but didn't want to weigh in on whether it should pass or not, that it might make sense for us to omit that recommendation part from yeah, that yeah. article would be something. Yeah. Do you know what she's referring to? I do. Yeah, okay. Well, I, the reason I, I would kind of support that because, you know, I've had a discussion with a number of people about when the select, it says select board, you know, three, two, five, four, one, five, zero. Some people have said to me, well, if it's, you know, five, four, one, five, zero, oh, that, that, that they're treating us like a council. We're not. And to this point, I think that's an excellent point where um, we've been advised sometimes not to put that on a Warren article of how the select board voted, because, um, especially in a situation like this, because um, I, I don't want anybody to think that my personal opinion is what I'm approving here. Um, what, I'm, what I would be approving is letting the voters decide and, and on the, the issue, because I don't. I, we, you can wordsmith it, you can do whatever, but the issue, as I said earlier, for, just from my perspective only, um, we, we can uh, play with, it's, it's marijuana retail, period. It's, it's the, the dangers you've heard and, and the proponents you've heard. I, I don't feel personally capable of wordsmithing it better than putting it on the ballot and saying, you're approving or not approving two retail stores in Camden in these zones. Uh, that, but I, I get your point. I think that that's a good point, though. I think, because it would be misleading I, to I think say the select misleading. board recommends fact. I, I think it's, it's very misleading. There's a difference misleading. between recommending yeah. it be voted on yeah, and yeah. recommending I, passage. I think it's, re from my perspective, it's recommended voting on, not that we're approving or suggesting that everybody or, or the majority vote to approve retail marijuana in Camden, no. I think that's, that's where the residents have to make a decision. That's where the residents should be making a decision. Uh, sorry, the voters, the voters need to be making a decision. But, but, but often we, we, have, we, we have things on the warrant, and not just at the town level, but also at the state mm -hmm. level, where we, we're asked a question that actually has two or three things in it, and whether we vote yes or no, we cannot vote, we cannot unpack those three things. I, there are some issues where I would say yes on the first sentence and no on the next two. So I think the issue we're faced with is exactly that in this, in this instance. We're asking, do you want retail stores? Do you want them within 500 feet um, of an educational facility? And, and I'm not quoting the text here. And, and do you want them in three business districts? So maybe people say, people may say, sure, I want a retail store in Camden but not in those districts. Mm. And so we cannot... We well, then they have to vote no, but voting... They have to vote package. no, exactly. So it's, but, but what I'm saying is that it's a bit... I, I really dislike this form because it's... Yeah. To me, it's disingenuous yeah, to have I, three I, different things three different or four. Questions. I know. So what... And I think what Stephanie is, is, is touching upon is like, maybe there's a way we can... You know, the thousand feet has been mentioned more than once. Um, the, the business district has been mentioned more than once. So maybe if we could find a way to phrase it so that we remove that, that kind of escalator question where I, I ultimately, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm looking, there's three issues and there's two I'm against, so I'm voting no. And I'm like, I'm bummed because I actually want to vote yes on one of them. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm trying to figure out, is there a way we can phrase it so that it's a clear yes or no? And it's not just a, I would have voted yes if they have, would have put the 1,000 feet oh, yeah. exclusion. Could it be put into two questions or? Well, no, it cannot. To recommend blah, 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 blah. Because it can, it's, but I'm not sure that's going to be very effective because you're. Because the 1,000 feet could pass and the 500 could not. That's, I mean, that's correct. Isn't, that's correct. Is there, just 
That, that, that is. Bill, where's Bill Kelly? Where's Bill Kelly? It's <laughs> I'm asking if you, here he comes. He's like, uh oh, here they go again. Uh oh, here he goes. Here comes Bill. Here comes the lawyer. Everybody leaves. It's the best part. Bill, are you there? I can hear me. I can very well. I don't know why I'm not video live, but there you go. <laughs> I don't know either. Uh, what? Oh, go to the staff. Yeah, he had to press the button with his own. Turn the light on. <laughs> <laughs> Have you been listening to the discourse, Bill? Oh, yeah. Okay, so you know the 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 uh, the conundrum that seems to be here is uh, the concern about the you know the ability of the decision making on the zoning, uh, the thousand versus five hundred feet. Um, because uh, fundamentally we have the zoning in the package right now and we have the 500 feet in the package right now. Um, I think one of the questions that came up was what splitting it into multiple decisions. Is that, I guess the core question was, is that possible? Yeah. That's what I thought. That's what I thought. So one, one question would be approving retail marijuana up to two, I'm just talking out loud here, uh, two, two uh, establishments in Camden, yes or no. Um, <laughs> do you, do you, uh, do you uh, approve of uh, 500 feet or, or, or whatever the other options might be? There would be more than one warrant article to address this topic. Right, but you, the, the caveat in my saying yes is that you can't get to the consistent results. So right. it would be something like this. First warrant article would say, let's say it's the, the language that's proposed, but it's 500 feet. The second warrant article would say, um, in the event that um, the town fails to approve article one, uh, do you approve? And then it'd be a second article, um, basically referencing a second draft of the ordinance with 1,000 feet. So you can't have it open in the past. It's, uh, yeah, un understood. That's how you do it. Right. And so you would have you would have one vote. Well, we did so the same. You, we did the same thing. The same thing for the we budget. did the same thing on the. Uh, if you recall, on the when we issue when we oh, faced the tannery. The tannery. The tannery when yeah. um, we had to uh, say if you disapproved of the previous one, do you, how do you vote on this one? And, yeah, but it was and, and uh, uh, one of those was a was an approval on the. Um, requirement to have the voters approve that tax acquired property sale. And but, then if you, if you have the thousand feet, then yep. it takes takes care of the, the third business. Right. If, if a person right. votes. I'm looking at you, Jeremy, because I, I if, if we without the 500 with the 500 feet, mm -hmm. B3 would still be in. But with a thousand feet, B3 is out, correct? No, with a thousand feet, it's just B3. Oh, it's just B3, okay. It makes it really simple, actually. <laughs> to Stephanie's point, it does okay. make it hellishly simple because uh, 500 feet is brings in Bayview and a couple of locations. 1,000 feet puts it somewhere on Elm Street yeah. up to... Yeah. A Bay Chambers? I haven't looked at where, yeah. where that takes you, how far up from it's the quite, it's, school, 1,000 feet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it also takes the Yacht Club out. Yeah, you have to go up 1,000 feet from Montessori. <laughs> But that's the, the, feet further than the map that I showed you. So basically, one would be to approve um, the um, 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 basically the Warren article we're looking at right now, which is the B3 included, uh, all the zones included, and in 500 feet. If you if you didn't approve that one, do you approve 1,000 feet, which reduces it to one zone only? One zone. Those would be the For two. The most, so you yeah. have three choices. You could answer no on both. Well, well, yes could, on one. Of course you could, but yeah. but the idea is if you're if you're voting yes on one, you don't. Shh. Excuse me. Thank you. Um, if we if we if you the first one that you would if you voted yes on the one that's at 500 and it's written now, you don't vote on the next one. Right. And if you vote no on 500, you can vote no oh, on 1,000. You, you, you can do that. Or you can vote yes, yes on 1,000. Yep. So right. you have that's, three. That's, that's, that's what, what that's I'm saying is that it gives voters three alternatives. 
I agree, and, it, just and, it, one. and, and it, it simplifies in a sense because one of the things to um, the zoning thing, which Jeremy just pointed out, I want to underscore it again, is if you go to a thousand, you're you're B three. That's you're B three. So you don't have a heck of a lot to debate about the thousand feet uh, because it's, it's it's we don't have to say oh BTH and all these other zones get in and out. You don't have to, it, it simplifies the voting process actually. Yeah. Do you so like? I, I, I mean, gotta hand it to you, Make Stephanie. a motion um, that we move forward with what you just <laughs> stated. Okay, I get stated that. What we would vote on? I, I can, I can, I can try. Yeah. What's that? I, 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 that's I, the motion. Also, this this is a perfect example of the Warren is going to come back to you with it worded the way that you proposed. Yes. And you will have that opportunity to look at that I language and so, make sure that it reflects whatever you voted on today. Right. The the. Right. The two two warrants that I would, I would make a motion to approve the development of two warrants. One warrant would basically no 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 articles. not no. Articles. articles. I'm sorry, articles. Okay. Thank you. I get confused easily. Obviously, I'm old. Uh, the the two articles. One article would be as drafted, mm -hmm. with 500 feet in the zones as currently um, exist. The second article would be if you disapprove of the that one that it would do would you approve 1,000 feet and basically it's one zone which reduces it to in effect one yeah, zone. I think it's probably probably best to just leave it as is and just change the 500 to the thousand the thousand because in effect if we change it to a thousand it only right, right, it right. only it it apply it there only anyway implies b3 yeah. so it's still two articles correct Two articles, but correct. we only that's, changed that's, the that's distance. I would muddy with at changing the, no, the second one to go just say B3. I would just leave it all, say B1, BTH, B3, and a thousand foot setback. But, but also why? I think what, oh, no. I, that's no. because it's. Yeah, why? No. It'll, it's, it's, it's a thousand feet uh, eliminates. I guess I'd let Bill chime in because it's, it's inconsistent with the first one. Right. I mean, that's how I, I would view it. You're just changing it by adding the 1,000 instead of 500. It's muddy. Yeah. People have a hard time with these codable zoning districts. They don't know them. I mean, what's the most meaningful is the. I, I think the, the, the core, well, Bill, you want to comment before I say anything more? Basically, we're talking about two articles. One article would be as, as we have it today, which is basically 500 and the list of zones. Uh, the other one would be 1,000 feet. But when you say 1,000 feet, which would, the article, in my opinion, should say, which would reduce the uh, eligible zone to B3 only. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Bill. I think it makes sense to just modify the distance. Uh, I know we're thinking about what's there now, but the way the statute is worded, it talks about pre existing uh, uses when it measures the 500,000 feet. Uh -huh. And any, any of those could change. So focusing on districts as being constant, it makes sense to me. I'm also slightly concerned that if, if, um, the district changed that much and had to put it back in front of the planning board and the hearing Good. under the AR requirements because it might be considered too substantive as a change. So I support your thought. Okay. Could we, is it possible to have maps on a, on a warrant? No. We can't. No. We can't show the difference. No, no, no. We, we can have them available at the town it, office yeah. and on exactly. our website, so, sure. So this is, I mean, we Everything I've it. heard tonight, you know, makes me think that people need more information in order to make their decision. So yeah. I think if we have maps, if we can under yes. in, in the town office on the website so people understand yes. the consequence of 500 feet versus 1,000 yes. feet. And that we have a licensing ordinance that comes into play, too. That's I mean, true. I don't think people knew that. Well, I think, oh, I think one of the we things need we need more we, education. One of the things we can do here is use our website for information for voters to look at so they can understand the, the zoning aspect. I agree. That, that's, a, that's better effect, actually. Okay. So that, my motion would be then to uh, Article 1 would, on this matter would be to approve As the 500 feet and the zoning is, but Article Two would be 1,000 foot only, but in parallel, board and Audra, we want to want to have some information on the website so people understand that because I think we always need to do a better job there. Agreed. And in some cases, we are more busy, but we need to do a, especially something like this. So that's my motion. I second. One of the choices is just say no. Yeah. yeah, you have okay. three. So oh, let me. Down to the five hundred thousand. Are you getting away from? Well, so yeah, no. Vote should basically be just people to, want it or don't want it. Um, again, so, this is a select board deliberation matter, and and to your point, you can vote no on both. Yes, you can. 
and, so it, you and can, it, it rejects the whole thing. You have three choices. So, yeah, that's, that's right. If you vote yes on the first one, you vote yes on the first one. You're done. If you vote yes on the five, let me finish, please. If you vote no on the first one, you can also vote no on the second one. Correct. Effectively voting no Correct. on both propos propositions. If you vote no on the first one, you can vote yes on the second right. one. Anyhow, so you have, you have three choices. That was, the, right. I think that's a and much we'll, better outcome than just one I choice. I agree. I have motion and seconded for the discussion. Those in favor? For, opposed. Well, are we, okay, are we voting? On my motion? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'm opposed. Yes. Okay. Four, uh, four motion carries four to one. We need to develop two articles for the 18th. Is that right, Audra? Is that, is that right, Jeremy? The 18th is, the, just so everybody knows, April 18th is the last date we get to approve anything that goes on the ballot because of printing time periods. It moves back a month every year because of printing restrictions, but just so everybody understands that. Thank you, Jeremy. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. And thank you, um, everyone. And also. thank you for your, all your great comments. And also, again, to the public, thank you very much. We appreciate it. With that, we're going to, oh, I got to get back on my agenda. So let's, I mean, if I, I think some people are going to leave, so if we can give them oh, okay. a couple of minutes. If people if, are going to be leaving, please do the so. The rest we'll of take the agenda we'll, is equally interesting, by yeah, the way. Yeah, right, right. We were going to sing songs. <laughs> Have espresso. Drink them all horse. Great discussion, gang. Great discussion. What do you think about, like, going to the bathroom really quick? Sure, yeah. sure. I'll take five minutes off, yeah. Yeah. Well, if you need more than five minutes, that's fine. <laughs> I won't, I like I won't time you. Like I've been drinking like a fish, but I don't want to get up. Good job, Thank you guys so much. That was thoughtful and really good measured responsibility. Thank you for that. It was a thoughtful and measured responsibility. I just see you guys made that. The only reason I'm I think we're elected to make these decisions, but I, I, I'm not adamantly opposed to the voters voting on it either. Thank you all. Really? Yeah. No, no, but what I mean, my, really, my first I'm in, I'm in Prague. I would, actually, Renata, my fiance, is um, from Romania. She was born there, and so we're going back. Um, yeah. Um, so we'll be. Yeah, a little extra time. And then we do the extended layover, the one night layover in Istanbul, which should be fun. I've never stopped there. Have you ever been to Istanbul? Yeah. It's very exciting town. Okay. Exciting. Exciting. I mean, it's lively. Yeah. You know, it's the. I think it's the. Uh, <laughs> without the uh, sex and marijuana, it's, it's like Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah, like Amsterdam. It's only. Well, yeah, it's different. It's, 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 I've seen it for a lot of people. Where? So it's. I think it's the. Yeah. Oh, this is terrible that I say, but I think it's. I miss uh, the the, the, the fifth through the. 
18th or something like that? Oh, May. Oh, May. Oh, May. Yeah. Oh, May. Oh, May. May. Yeah. The 6th through the 18th? Something like that. Yeah, that'll be gone from the uh, April 29th through May. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. April 26th through May 8th. Cool. And uh, Italy? Yeah. Super. Yeah. I know you love it there. Yeah. I have to go sometimes. Well, I'm trying to relearn my parents' language. Yeah. And the only way to really learn is to immerse yourself. Sure. Yeah, it's, it's coming back. Yeah. yeah. Um, Renata's daughter uh, is going to be in Milan. Isn't she a model? Or she is, yeah. So that's, yeah. She's, she's just leaving Cape Town and she's heading to Milan. Oh my God. Yeah. Maybe yeah, we'll get a chance to me, it's, it. it's heritage related, obviously. Yeah, yeah. All right, Allison's back. I think, are we missing anybody? No, Allison's back. All right. Audra, if we're missing anyone. Yeah, right. <laughs> Audra, we're missing anyone. All right, everyone, could I have your attention, please? They're going to re uh, adjourn as a, our select board meeting and uh, move on to action items. We have. The owl died. Oh, no, it's, it's just sleeping. All right, well, item five, we already covered the approval of Italy license. We have item B, which is a de uh, address the donation from the Save the Dam Falls Committee for maintenance of the Montgomery Dam. Audra, do you want to give us a little treatise of what you prepared and what, and where, and, and also any, any additional information you have? I know this has been a, uh, an effort to get together in, in a couple of weeks, especially during in, in this budget season, which is extremely hectic for us, but go ahead. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to give you an idea, based on the list that we got from um, the committee about their um, priority for how the money was spent, I wanted to um, sort of just give you an idea of what the cost of those items were. Uh -huh. And we had information that I put in the memo that went into your packet about um, quotes that we received for this work in the past. Mm -hmm. What I was hoping that I would have for you um, in time to include in the packet, but unfortunately it didn't, we weren't able to get it until yesterday. We're updated estimates um, for similar work. And um, I, I do have those updated costs, but um, you know, I, I do think that some of the information that we have um, for the gate, um, we did a very similar project on the West Dam. It was a very similar, I think, um, system and mechanism um, that you know, would, would be considered and would be workable for the Montgomery Dam. Although the method of, um, you know, how it would need to be installed is, is way different. Um, we do have, you know, that estimate that's updated, as well as the, um, you know, the crest of the spillway. That was an estimate from 2017, but we just yesterday got an updated version of that estimate. So, you know, I, it really depends on how much additional information that you all want about that in order to make a decision. Um, there was also some additional information that uh, the public works director received today that might, you know, it might factor into what uh, the committee would like done with the funds because we, we found an additional source of leakage from the impoundment of the dam that isn't the sluice gate, but it's just as much um, water being released from the dam, or it appears to be similar in amount um, to what's coming out of the, the sluice gate that's going to another area. So, you know, that might impact um, what they're interested in spending that money on. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, if you're interested in hearing about that, Dave can give well, you additional guess, information. Um, uh, there were, there, was, there were, um, or uh, four, I think, as I recall, I'm trying to find it in my packet. It was in here. The four items that they had. Yeah, discussed. do you want me to read those out? Yeah, just, just summarize them. So, so um, they're, and, the and, first and, one. And, and by the way, and, and two of those, what the estimate is for work and what type of work it is. Certainly. So the, the first item in that, and they ranked them in terms of priority, was repairing the sluiceway gate. Yep. And so that's the one we have something comparable from work that was done on the West Dam. Right. And so at the time we did that project, we received quotes and or we received bids in 2019 for that. So I would say that that portion of that project at the time, and this isn't the overall cost of what was done on the West Dam, but just the replacement of the gate itself, the materials and labor was about $42,000 at the time. And so we received an updated quote for that work um, 
2023. For a two, wow. th 2023 quote for the work, so the installation of a new gate and the gate itself, um, we're looking at about $80,000. The quote was for $80,742. So that would be the new okay. gate. So that's the gate. So the next was repairing the entire 100 foot crest of the spillway. So the last time we got a quote for, for the, just the repairs to the concrete was 2017 and it was 71,250. And we got an updated quote from Knowles, who was the same contractor who did the repointing, the masonry work on the opera house. Mm -hmm. But they also put in that quote back in 2017 for the yeah. concrete spillway repair. So their new quote for that work was 131,800. And number three was removing vegetation in the cracks of the dam. So that that's something if if you know everyone's interested in moving forward with that, we would need to go and seek um, you know quotes for that. Mm -hmm. And then number four was repointing the granite section of the dam and sealing cracks in both the granite and concrete. And that's something else. That's another thing that we'd have to get an updated cost from Knowles on. Okay. Okay, um, this was no numbers on the cracks for the, for the wall. Uh, we didn't have any data on that one at all. Um, I, guess, I guess the question is, and I don't want to get into engineering, but in your opinion, well, I'm not, not, I'm not going to go there right now. Um, uh, that's not important. Um, but it seems to me that, um, oh, Dave, you concur with these numbers we're discussing, I presume here. <coughs> Dave, can you hear me? I can hear you, Bob. Can you repeat that? Not really. Not really. Um, a very faint. I don't know why. Try it again. He's turning the volume up the TV and that'll fix it. Oh, thank you so much. Dave, try again. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, you sounded like a bear. That's good. <laughs> um, any comments on the numbers, Dave, um, in terms of these? Well, so the, the Knowles the Knowles estimate is, is you know just we just got it yesterday. The allowance for the grant reporting is twenty five thousand seven hundred dollars. Uh, the cost for the repairs um, Wait, I, with the same elevation as it's currently at is ninety two thousand seven hundred fifty, and the cost to reduce the elevation by four inches, which I don't know how they arrived at four inches, but that was an additional $12,350. So if you take the elevation change out, it's $119,450. If you incorporate any elevation change to the, the dam, it's $131,800. Um, I could show you that on the slideshow. Um, it kind of illustrates the... Um, the different the numbers if you want. I have a, just, just a quick thing I want to show you, um, which is pretty interesting and wasn't by any means a result of trying to address the need for this information. It was, a, it was actually a request by Lee Montgomery. Um, she had a problem uh, in the surrounding, surrounding basement. Um, main was construction was doing some work down there and they felt like um, the, the abutments for the uh, deck, um, the footing of the deck was being undermined with some water. And I thought that possibly it was a storm water line coming in and wearing, wearing away and eroding underneath of that mm -hmm. water. So I went down and took a look at it. It was pretty neat and it was a place that would be kind of interesting because you don't get to go down there very often. So I have a, I have a Little slideshow, just three slides real quick. I know you guys have a long night. I promise I won't take too long, but um, how, how could some interesting things? And I think the picture will explain a little bit more. How, how can we refuse, Dave? Go ahead. But uh, be as crisp as. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. So, um, did you mean the village shop or surroundings? So, because uh, the surroundings, surroundings wouldn't really. Surroundings wouldn't really have a basement, or I think you probably mean the village shop. I don't know. Can't, I don't think Dave, you can. pop up your slideshow. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm trying, trying to show him. Well, he did. While he does okay. that, hold on. We need to do a point of order and oh, agree right. to extend the meeting till probably 9:30. If that's what I, I, I make think, a motion I think it should be a that we 9:30. Yeah, maximum 9:30. Yes. Max. Yeah, like 9:20 target. But, yeah. Okay. Would everybody agreed with that. We don't need to put it to a motion. We'll, okay. We'll agree that it will be 9:30 hard stop. Yeah. All right. Oh, go ahead, Dave. So, so can you guys, guys, you guys see this now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, great. So, um, as, as you can see, see uh, these are the three buildings that, you know, when, when, when I evaluated the situation, the blue star is um, the economy of drain outfall. This is a, a drain, an old drain outfall, and I, I couldn't tell you exactly why it was, why it was in there, but it's a very old line. And um, the problem was where the loose star was in the basement, and it was undermining the uh, it was undermining the uh, the floor. You can see right here to the right, and oh, yeah. you can see the broken pipe right here on the left. And that pipe actually comes out of the bottom of the building outside, and has a piece of screen on it because we thought it was some type of stormwater discharge when they did the stormwater. Yeah. Um, Re rebuilt on uh, on the sidewalk earlier last year. Yeah. So all this water was just flowing really heavily um, and undermining the situation. We thought maybe it was stormwater. So what I did was I, I kind of, this was back in February 15th, 16th. So I looked at the lake levels enough to get the, um, a little bit of capacity so I could open up the pond area and drain it without worrying about water coming over the spillway. And then I went today, uh, yesterday, when I, when I drained the impoundment area, um, I found that um, pretty much what happened was, um, you can see I took a video of it, it was dark down here, and that same line, so I'm gonna run the video right here. That's a video of the water line of the impoundment drain on the left. Okay, you really don't see anything moving. Um, this, is, this, is, this is the way it looked on the video on the right. This is when the impoundment area filled up, and that's how it looked when I first went down there before I drained the impoundment. So there's a significant amount of flow going in this and leaving out through that building, eroding the building structure coming from the, um, the, the basic the built lawn. It's originated, so I didn't really know where it was coming from. So I, when I was getting ready to fill the little pond and the top of here back up, I went down and started looking around underneath to see if I could see where the inlet was. And then I found what I believe to be the, uh, the inlet, which is oops, right here. And this is leaning up against um, the, once the tree. And this is basically the inlet to that. Um, drain line that exits out the location I showed you. If you look at the map right here, so here's the great with the blue with the red. Here's a um, here's a uh, the all all fall with blue is and whenever the pond spills, you just have water the water moving through there. So I know that the the concern was you know the gate being repaired to keep the water um, level high enough. In the impoundment area, but I think that with this drain area, it's is probably a large source of our water leaving the, the uh, impoundment area. So, you know, this might want to be taken into consideration when you're talking about repairs, if it's the objective is to keep water inside here. Um, so, so you're basically adding another element of uh, construction. Bottom okay. line. You're basically identifying uh, another another place for a potential construction need or capital expenditure no i would say that this is all sort of a private property oh this is all private property. oh oh oh, oh. This is, this is i'm sorry i'm sorry oh i'm sorry okay that, I, I, I got it that, that okay all okay Part of the issue with the gate leaking probably is, is, is 
There is an issue there, but there's also probably just as big of an issue with the fact that you have a drain line. This is a 12-inch pipe. 12? So there's a lot of water coming out of there. Um, and as the water level comes up, it flows heavier. So I guess, and then I, what I did was I put together the, the repair cost right here with the new quotes. Um, and it, just, just for the record, Knowles' work on the uh, concrete portion would take about uh, eight weeks, working 10 hour days, four days a week. And we would be in charge of the permits, the traffic control, the water, and the electricity. Hmm. Okay. Yep. So I, I just want to remind you guys have all the information so that you can make the decision on what to do with money. All right. Um, I hope that helps. It does. And I'd be willing to answer any questions if you have. Mm. Stuart, go ahead. I think if I could just make a comment, and Dave, uh, when you were down in the basement, did you go down in the basement of the uh, Once a Tree? You're, you turn your microphone on. Yeah. So. Um, the basement of the Once a Tree, um, that was an old mill, a uh, flour mill, and the grindstones are still down in the basement. So I think what you're looking at that is the chute, the water chute that was coming out of the pond to run the to run grist the, mill. To way back and when. So sure, way back that, when, and something, something, must have, something must have opened up in that I mean, pipe. So that all lines up with what I found, but yeah. you can leave that I on. think that, you know, we're yeah. losing water, and it really is all going out the gate. You know, we've got a, basically a drain there that's acting as a source yeah. of losing water also. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's all kind of rocky, but it's really not. The storm issue is associated with public work, but I thought I'd eat. I thought I'd share that. Understood. Yeah, that's great. That's, that's interesting. I, I don't know if it's good, bad, or ugly, but it's interesting to, I'm, I'm sure you're right about the former use. That looked like it was something that was designed way back when. Ron probably can tell us exactly how it worked. But yeah. Dave, within your quotes, uh, do, where is the repair or replacement of the sluice gate? Uh, the quotes that you have on the screen now. It's right there. The twenty is that the, the whip skate? So, so um, the 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 whips model nine twenty four DMD that is the exact model of what is that the West Dam? Um, I'm, I'm guessing this number is going to be pretty close. Um, it, it probably would have to be modified to be the, the exact size of the the um, Montgomery Dam gate with a slight modification, probably you know up or down a little bit, not much. Then the insulation portion is the second on the 57, 242. That's just based on the um, cost of what it was at West Dam with an increase, with a, with a percent increase that's mm. in the line of the other two uh, lines mm -hmm. of work, the DMD yeah. itself and the concrete DM pair. Just to bring so, it Dave, just to bring it back to Audra's initial, when she re uh, represented the sluice gate 2023, she said 80,742. That's the 23,500 plus the 57,242. That's, That's correct, because it's two parts. You know, we, we, we purchased the gate ourselves from the couple from WIS. Yep. And then we, we had a contract to do a solid. Sure. Sure. Another question, Dave. Uh, so it's twelve about twelve thousand dollars less to re, uh, to leave the dam at the present height. Yeah. So so the the number right here, the two twelve five forty two. Um, that's the total. The, the concrete portion is um, concrete pairs one thirty one eight hundred, and it would be twelve thousand three hundred fifty less of the one thousand. 131,800 to leave it at the current elevation, which would be um, 119,450. So if you didn't change the elevations, 119,450 approximately, right. give or take. I mean, and that also, my notes down here also um, talk a little bit about the fact that if they get down to below the sediment level and they see additional cracking or deterioration, that doesn't take into consideration the repairs of that. So he did have that caveat in the last bid, and I think that um, you just don't know what you're getting into when you start getting into something that's been there for so long. And also there's some concern that it probably has deteriorated a little bit more over time. Along those same lines, Dave, um, for removing vegetation, do you have any concern that when the vegetation is gone, we'll see additional erosion? Well, I mean, you, you know as well as I do, Tom, we start pulling 
pulling and yanking and tooling on things. So if you do that, you probably could possibly see some um, additional cracking and deterioration of, of the concrete. But you know, you wouldn't want to come until you do it really right. Mm -hmm. That's why for years and years it was a, I saw it on the select board agenda long before my time that they would apply Roundup to it mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. and you know and it was done um, with sort of regret but it was like a select board vote on like whether to apply Roundup to the to the dams because you know the idea of not damaging <coughs> by pulling more out. Um, mm -hmm. But it, I, I, I think we stopped that. I, don't I also I want to say that I called Eva on Jeopardy to let her know what I found. And she, you know, she knows that I was going to mention yep. it. Also. Yep. Okay. That's good. I'm sure she wasn't happy. Well, at least well, I mean, it, it, I mean, I mean, at least she knows what the source of the water is. That's, 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 that's true. Know, that's maybe true. The, maybe the three building owners, if they want to. Fix it, you know, they might be able to do something collaboratively together yep. to fix it. Yep. I don't know. Yep. Yep. Well, that's the, I guess there's just a, some small. Uh, but I guess before all of you make a decision on, you know, sort of given what we now know, accepting the donation, you might want to ask the Save the Dam Falls committee if they want to speak with some of, like, you know, Lee and the private property owners. Sure. If, if that's something that they want to consider the donation for. I don't want to speak for anybody, but no, I think no, that, no. you know, it's, a, it's an issue. It's, sure. it's an issue I think that, you know, they seem to be concerned about from talk about, you know, water draining out of the impoundment. So <clears throat> with the funds they re raise, that could be a good way to solve mm -hmm. multiple problems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's also the way that you can watch the Elvers scale up. <laughs> That way, some one of the Oliver fishermen pointed that out to me, but they probably don't make it all the way. But I don't know. That's not anything right, for us I, to decide. The, the donation offer is very generous. I, I do see this as the town's responsibility to uh, maintain that dam until we make a decision ultimately about the entire river project. Um, so my personal feeling is that we should be maintaining that dam, doing the upkeep on it, and that the Save the Dam folks can use that money for some other project, and maybe maybe that underneath the private buildings is more appropriate, mm -hmm. or anything else that they'd like to use it for. I'd also add to that, Tom, because from what I've seen in here, we've had multiple um, quotes for upkeep to the dam that feels like it's been deferred deferred till when i'm not really quite sure because as we've talked i don't feel like a decision on anything is going to be made for years so what i'm seeing in there is the first quote that i saw was from 2016. Mm -hmm. if i deferred maintenance on my house all it's going to do is just crumble more I feel like it's almost an embarrassment to watch it do so um, at the rate that it is. And I feel like we need to really think about that and advise to have some sort of maintenance done because that's what I feel like I'm hearing is well, before, Audra and before you talk about maintenance in Montgomery, I need to remind you that we have three high hazard dams We've got two that we did major maintenance on over the past few years, and we have another one that we need to do major maintenance on. And, and we've known this is coming for a while, and that's the, the East Dam. So that those really have to be well, the maybe, priority. Well, uh, maybe just as a benefit, everybody explain about high, uh, high risk dams versus, well, the Montgomery Dam or others. So those are the ones that were required by um, MEMA, so that's the main emergency management um, association to um, inspect periodically and so you know you'll you'll see that the budget proposed for this year has um, the inspections that need to be done so the structural inspections and we've known for a few years now that there are some major repairs that need to be made to the east dam and we've been um, setting aside reserve funds to do some of those repairs right 
uh, that was prior to, um, well, not all of it was prior to the construction market changing, yeah. but those are, those are sort of facing us. So, you know, we need to, we can't do everything all at once. We need to prioritize certain things. For the past few years, we've prioritized Seabright, then the West Dam, and we've known that the East Dam is also Same thing out. for which the reserve is being put aside. But in classification, is the Montgomery Dam inspected or not? It doesn't need to be. And, and, it's, and it doesn't need to be because? It's not a high hazard dam. Okay. I want to, a lot of people don't know that terminology, so I just wanted to pull that out of us because I think it's important mm -hmm. to understand. Uh, Alice, go ahead. I mean, going back and, and reading all of the dam inspection reports for years and years, it's really the same conundrum that all the select boards have, have always been in, that the, every single inspection report has said that the Montgomery Dam spillway is degrading, um, along with all the other things they mention in the other dams, but they say this one is a, aesthetic and that there's no risk to safety or anything like that. And so each time that different select words have looked at doing that, they've said, oh, they've ended up with a bunch of different costs with the other dams. Um, the same thing when, you know, when I first got on the select board and didn't know anything about any of this, there was money budgeted for Seabright and for Montgomery, and it was like, I forget whether it was sixty-five or $80,000 total, and Seabright just ended up, what started with a $25,000 repair turned into $300,000. Um, now that Seabright, it used to be that they would drain that to do the inspections and, and repairs. And I remember John French saying that at the time, well, you know, we could always, we could always lower it if you really wanted to see, because we were sending, and I thought, I thought that sounded crazy at the time, but now I understand what he meant, that in order to be able to see everything that was wrong with it all at once, but instead with Seabright, we're, you know, we're maintaining that water level now, which makes sense because it really is like a pond with an ecological importance. But now it's like things just keep cropping up. And it, every time the divers went down, they were like, oh, there's this hole or there's that hole. And then before you knew it, all the money was used up on, on that. Um, it's just a lot of, I think it would be a good thing to go through some of that same exercise that we did years ago of really looking at like all the dams and all of the expenses. I know that the committee or, or whatever is looking at like the pros and cons and the fish and all of that, but it's been a while since we've looked at like just like what are the non-discretionary, you know, numbers behind what we need to plan for. Yeah. I do think that that, you know, given that we're going to have Kleinschmidt doing the inspections on the, um, the high hazard dams, we'll have better updated numbers. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. The high hazard dams to me are a completely separate issue. Uh, those, obviously, we're going to spend money on those as necessary, high hazard, self-defining. This is something that's happening downtown Camden. It's something that we all see on a regular basis. It's something that our visitors see on a regular basis. And I don't think the present condition of the dam should stand undetermined, undefined, with no timetable for making it look nice, function well, and everything involved. I, I just think East Dam aside, we'll, we'll talk about that. We'll spend the money necessary to make sure that that's safe. Um, this is something that we need to look at from a different perspective. It's more aesthetic, but we still need to look at it and consider it in our budget. I, I would say, I mean, the dam looks different from different perspectives, but my feelings about the dam aside or what little changes should be made or, or not, I spend a, a lot of time down there with people and I know from certain vantage points it might not look great, but I, I stand there and take people's pictures all the time. It's from people like the view of water flowing over rocks and yeah, more is lost from the public onto the public landing side right now, so there's more of a waterfall over there. But Personally, that's my favorite view of it, and I think a lot of people stand there and look and they're like, oh my gosh, water flowing over rocks. So I think that it is, people are, are, are down there, maybe from, I can see how from the certain vantage points above, maybe it doesn't look as good as it, as it could, but it does still look really 
beautiful in a lot of ways. I see people really getting a lot of joy out of it. So I don't think it's a... I agree with you. I mean, there's some natural beauty there, but if you look at it from certain angles and from certain positions, it looks like it's in disrepair. It looks like it has not been maintained. It looks, looks neglected from certain there's angles. It's an abandoned storage tank, a fuel storage tank that people that, ask me all the time. That does it belong to the town? It's, it's in the impoundment. I mean, I, I think that the vantage point when you're standing at the Mariner's deck and you're like, and the kids are like, what's that? And they're like, oh, well, that's the where we used to store, somebody used to store oil. Why aren't they getting that out of there? I don't know. Is it the town's responsibility? And I say, I don't, I don't know, you know. But, but this is the town's responsibility. We know that. Well, the, uh, I, no, no, no. I, I think, uh, one second, Tom. Um, uh, I think the, the, it is, there's a bunch of issues going on here, that, and not the least of which is we're in the middle of approving our budget cycle this year. The money that's in the current budget does not, uh, does not accomplish quite well, I mean, dollars. you know, you have the opportunity when you do your budget review to propose right. adding right. money to do these repairs, right. and if three of you approve it, it goes to voters and... I agree. I agree. That's a, the whole issue is it comes to one second. One, no, it was Tom was first. Ray, Tom was first. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, you raised it. Okay, Ray, go ahead. Um, okay, Ray Andreessen, uh, Camden resident. And I just want to get back to the offer that the Save the Dam Falls yep. Committee made, yep. Yep. okay, of $11,500. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that was really, we stipulated that that's for temporary repairs. What, I believe Dave is showing up there is full repair of replacement of the gate and everything. We just really made this offer to just some temporary repairs and attention to the Montgomery Dam for the visitors coming in this summer. Mm. That's what we want. And really we laid out a priority. The sluice gate we feel is the best. And I'm wondering if with Dave on screen there, if he can say if you looked at any little adjustments or physical adjustments to the existing gate that could be made. We don't, we didn't think that $11,000 was going to pay for a whole new gate. No, of course not. Okay. Um, and that's something the town's going to have to decide. But the people who pledged money for this mm -hmm. were thinking that some small re temporary repairs could be made to the Montgomery Dam. And we really laid it out that a priority I don't think any of our donors would be happy if we just went to removing vegetation, which I think some of them would say we could get into the water and do that ourselves. Yeah. So, Dave, is there, did you look at any temporary adjustments to the gate or fixes to the gate instead of a full replacement? And what would that cost? So, Ray, I mean, we fixed the gate twice last year. Mm -hmm. um, and I think maybe if you plug that drain that I showed you in that video, that will help with some of the water that loses in the summertime. And then when the, when, you know, if, if we had to make an adjustment on the boards or whatever on the bottom of the sluice gate, I mean, I don't, I mean, I, we did that last year without any donation. That wasn't, that was something that needed to be done and we did it. Um, I mean, the problem is that the, the whole thing, the whole platform and everything is getting to a point of, you know, being a safe, I mean, when you close the dam gate, the whole platform lifts up, it's, uh, I mean, you're asking them to fix something that's, that's going to take a lot of, probably, money to fix, temp 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 I mean, I guess I don't understand what, Kind of a temporary fix you're expecting. I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you want to achieve? Are you able? Be okay. Are you able to? Are you able to physically? The okay. The less water to come out. Yes. Yes. If there's so, less water or whatever, I mean, it's sometimes you have a full flow of water coming down mm. uh, the sluice way, um, and that. In the summer, that's going to drain the pond, the mill pond, so that it will look like last year, where if you looked out, there was you see more mud than water, mm -hmm. from a vantage point like the top of the Camden Deli. in the summer, and that's what we're trying to get away from for this summer. Yeah. And we're looking for so, a temporary fix. We're not looking for. There's going to be many decisions made as to the future of Montgomery Dam. We realize that. Right. 
And uh, well, putting mean, a new solution. I think it's two things. If you're trying to achieve keeping it from completely draining the summertime, you know, in the summertime, we, we, we crank the gates back above to an inch and a half, which is minimum flow. So you're going to have very little water going down through there this summer. And if it's a dry season, it's even less. So whatever places the water is leaking out probably would, you know, would help keep that full. And the two places are partially the, the last board on the gate, which I guess we had to do. We could do something with the last board on the gate, maybe put a seal on it or some sort of piece of rubber. But the thing is that you have a big, you have a 12-inch inlet pipe that's letting the water out and draining through the buildings and coming out by the public landing. So, and that's on private right property. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think without fixing that, you're going to have the same problem. I mean, it's just, you, I mean, it's not just the gate that's letting water out, it's the 12 inch pipe. That was why I showed that. Um, so, I guess, you know, the task part, we could look at the board on the bottom and and see if we can make that seal a little better, which probably we can. But I really think that, you know, not plugging the other problem is, isn't going to be beneficial to keeping the water in there. You have to take care of the other issue, too. Does right. that make sense? It makes sense, except that that's a pri it's privately owned, the, what you're talking about, the other pipe and that the town owns the sluice gate and the dam and the town should be making at least some temporary repairs there to make it look as best as the town can for this coming summer so that means trying to keep more water in the in the apartment we would like yes okay so i mean i i told you that i could probably make it so that less water goes out of the sluice gate <laughs> But, but you're, you're still, still going to have the problem of the water going out the 12-inch pipe, I think is what I'm saying. So I understand that. I can do, I can do that part. Mm -hmm. I, don't need, I don't think that's a big cost mm -hmm. associated with that. I think it's, it's just that's coming up with some kind of a seal. But I really think the bigger issue is you have nothing. You don't have anything to solve the water from going out the 12-inch pipe. Which we didn't know about until tonight. Okay. Um, done? I think so. The, the other question is, with that sluice gate being open so much and everything, is there any liability for the town of, say, some pet dog or somebody or a young kid falling into the water and being sucked out? Or, I've never been down underneath the water to see what's there. So, Is there any liability of somebody being drawn right down the sluice way? I think it's the same liability of somebody walking out the gate and operating that gate without fall protection and a dog and a dog and system, you know, it's, right. it's where do you, you know, the whole thing is probably out of compliance with all kinds of things. I don't yeah. think yeah. that the gate being open is any more dangerous than people being able to walk out on the dam. Yeah. Um, it's an OSHA violation. Right. It's an OSHA violation. Right. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Um, so uh, fundamentally where we're at is, um, you know, bottom line is looking at, oh, I'm sorry, thank you, uh, looking at um, some, you know, whatever number of dollars is uh, for, to, to budget to do this mega work and some limited repairs, but, um, you know, I, I guess it's a bit of a conundrum at this point in time for me, uh, as to what we, you know, the very generous offer of 11500 we can graciously accept and use for some small elements but i as i read the letter ray from you all it was very clear that you wanted the money spent on options one in order of precedence or options one two and four i guess three yeah one two and four thank you um and that that's uh, you know uh, which excludes vegetation of course um uh, that's uh, it, it, it doesn't solve our uh, financial problem we have to do whatever repairs we do especially to the dam itself uh, or not repairs, but re rebuilding it basically is what you're doing. My thought process is same, but to summarize again, um, you know, it sounds like Dave has some uh, techniques that he could use to keep water in the impoundment this summer. Um, I'm going to suggest that we 
suggest to the Save the Dam Falls Committee that they they use that money to block the 12 inch pipe mm. that's uh, letting water out of the impoundment and the town will take care of what we can with the sluice gate on on a budget on a on the cheap um, I'm still going to suggest to the board that we knowing that we're going through a long process with this river that we do something to make that dam look like it's not in severe neglect mm -hmm. Yeah, we can all go out there for a workshop or something sometime and well, I think I, I, sometimes I, it's helpful to sit there and like look at I don't know it would help sure me. I mean I've seen it I mean I've seen it too it's just well I think to, Tom to your point I think it's you know, you're, you're right we can do some you know what Dave is suggesting on the sluice gate um, but the money could be spent to fix that 12 inch pipe problem still the remaining budget to work on the dam as a chunk of change it has to go through the budget process we don't have the money right now and and we've got to determine uh, in the budget process whether or not we want to add some chunk of change to uh, to uh, that uh, to the budget process sure we might still have a few more There's can i make comments. one comment because i just wanted yeah. to say that we just spent what 115,000 on the temporary repairs to the boardwalk that we just pulled out of nowhere we spent almost over three hundred thousand dollars already this year mm -hmm. on stuff that haven't hasn't been budgeted mm -hmm. we've spent almost a million dollars that wasn't budgeted since i've been elected right. i think that putting we do i will go back through and make and oh, no, we probably have, have um, almost nine hundred thousand dollars worth of non-budgeted items that we've approved since i've been put on the board and I'm just saying that if we put some money towards making this obligation, as I feel, look better for the town, do you know how much money we make off the landing down there? I mean, the town's economic value is super increased, and I just think that we owe it to not just the Montgomery family for their donation, but the mm -hmm. townspeople to mm -hmm. take care of something that was gifted to us and that I feel we have the obligation mm -hmm. to. Well, we've got three minutes left, so we're going to have to go to a hard stop in three minutes. So is, quick. It, is it possible to put this on at 250000 or 255 on the ballot for the people to vote on. We, we just talked about letting the people vote on having a marijuana shop. Yeah, but you this get is it. a single item item that I, this is a hot button in the whole town and there's a tremendous amount of support to fix the dam. And people feel like the money got shuffled up to other dams legitimately I understand that. But people want to fix the Montgomery dam. We'll have to fix the other ones too, but put it on the ballot $250,000 to fix the Montgomery dam. And I think you'll see it pass nine to one. Yeah, I, I, it wasn't the one of the comment I, I saw your hand up, Tom. Did you want to? Yeah, I, I just um, this young lady. I'm sorry, Tom. Wait, could just. I don't, I don't take your time. It's nine thirty. Well, I got a question for Dave. Oh, Margaret Doutner. I'm a Camden resident. Yeah. Um, for Dave, can you hear me, Dave? Yes. Um, you said last summer that you did a couple of adjustments, or uh -huh. I don't know if you called them repairs, but adjustments. Was, was there a cost in that to make it better last summer? I could have sworn you said you did something yeah, last he did. year he did. or last he summer. Did. He did. So can you do that again, like even before the vote, if it did go for like 250000 asking the, the town if they wanted to repair the dam? But in the meantime, would the 11,500 cover your adjustments to make it? I don't know. It seemed like you did something yeah, last summer question. to help out. I think um, staff time. I don't know that anybody asked you. We're two minutes from being done. Yes, That's we are. reasonable. I mean, Tom, I'll let the Audra could answer this question. Um, the comprehensive plan, um, there's an earmark for $30,000. For repairs to Montgomery Dam. TIF. Yeah, the TIF. So where did that money go? There's plenty of TIF funds, but the TIF is no, very this specific. Is, this is specific to Montgomery Dam, and I yeah, have a copy. Yeah, yeah. There's okay. Can I answer your question? Sure. So there's plenty of TIF funds that you could use for the Montgomery Dam, but it's specific that you would have to lower the crest of the spillway. Correct. Why don't we? 
It actually says the sluiceway, and the, the the language says the well, sluiceway. Well, we know what they it was, mean. It's spillway. It was specific to lowering the flood risk, which came long before any of us were on the board. It was a Ken Bailey thing. Mm. So, so there's, there's thirty thousand dollars right there. Okay. So in the we have like a minute left yes. to make motions and to move forward. Um, I. I didn't hear anybody immediately say that we can't have an article item on the ballot. So I'm going to make a motion that we do have an article item of some sort of $250,000 with a 25,000 contingency on the ballot that we vote on with the town to know once and for all, are we fixing the dam? until we figure out, it could be years, till we figure out what is going on with the dam. That's my motion. Second. You we wouldn't do anything? We, we have a... We have every right in the world to do whatever we need to to that dam. Well, to ask voters And you can always you vote against your own resolutions. Uh, I second the motion. Uh, Bush made a second to discussion. The only discussion I have is um, the, ba the ballots in June um, this is not going to satisfy any summer work for anybody, so we have to recognize that too. Because one of the requirement, one of the requests, was to make it mm, whatever for this summer. That's not going to happen. So. I'll make another motion after this one. This discussion. Yeah, I mean, I, the whole exercise of what we're going through, which I agree is n not enjoyable, um, mm. is to try to find a solution that will not if we if we just go and address the montgomery dam by itself which is what we were going to do at first and all these people said you should look at the whole river and the whole system and what the pros and and, and cons are right now we have the the montgomery dam doesn't need to be operated ideally we would get out of a situation where it requires so much of the town to have to open and close and the only reason that to open it ever is is debated, and so if we could just, I mean, I'm I'm voted, I'm not in favor of that because it excludes the opportunity for people yeah, to be able to yeah. just make some small changes to that dam. So am I done? I so that we wouldn't have to talk. adjust it anymore. I know, I know but we're we're out of time. We're out of time. We're out of time. Um, um, I, um, we we have a motion on the table and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion doesn't carry. So we're kind of at a deadhead, um, unfortunately. We don't want to drop this. Um, I think there's a lot of good discussion we have to carry forward about it. Um, and uh, we won't let it drop. Will it be on the next agenda? I have no idea. We are, we, are in the middle, we are in the middle of budget time. Next meeting is going to be filled with budget discussion, so I can't answer agenda questions until I see the load we have. And, and, and we have to determine what that agenda item is, by the way. I'll work on that. We could ask Kleinschmidt to do a, we could include yeah. it in the inspection um, for the other day. We're going to, uh, to our hard stop. We could have been doing a lot since now. Make a motion <laughs> to adjourn. <laughs> Um, yes, Tom, would you do that? I make a motion to adjourn. Second. I second it all in the discussion. All those in favor. Thank you. Five, six. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs>